going to the center of the field for the coin toss now. A crowd of 93,000 plus here at Neyland Stadium. There's Dick Burleson, and let's listen to the coin toss. All right, shake hands with the Vanderbilt captain. Number 16 is Captain Sims. Shake hands with the Vanderbilt captain. First player you saw was number seven, Chris White. Of number 88, Captain Sims. McGee. Shake hands with the Vanderbilt captain. Tim McGee with Wade, Let me introduce Walford, the other officials and Sykes for, for Vanderbilt. Game, beginning on my left, Mr. Diopolis will be your side judge. Mr. Lorino will be your line judge. Mr. Thomas will be your back judge. Mr. Towns will be your linesman. Mr. Laney will be your field judge. Mr. Williams will be your umpire. Now, gentlemen, on any penalty plays today, if you don't understand it, yeah. tell me. I'll explain it as many times as necessary. Once you give me your choice, that's it. Can't change it. The choice is obvious. I'll pick up the ball, mark it off, and tell you what it is. Now, Vanderbilt, you're the visiting team. Which one will call? All right, we're going to flip with a centennial coin. The football is heads. This side is tails. If I drop it, we'll flip again. You call heads. And it is tails, and Tennessee, you win the toss. Steve Wade of Vanderbilt you called the, the toss. Tennessee, Tennessee wins, wins, defers their decision until the second half. The All right, it'll be your choice this half. You, you want the ball. Which end will you defend? And there you go. Vanderbilt is going to receive the ball, and we'll get to see this Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt offense begin this football game. Steve on this end. The captains out there, as I say, Kermit Sykes, Will Walford, and Steve Wade for Vanderbilt, and White, Sims, and McGee for Tennessee. Just prior to the game, Tony Robinson, who brought so many wonderful moments to the University of Tennessee Volunteers, one of 14 graduating seniors introduced in front of the 93,000 here. Who can forget what he's done for the Volunteers? This year alone, Tony threw for over 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns before going down in the Alabama game, led the Vols to a 3-1-1 record in that big 38-20 win over the previously ranked number one team in the nation, Auburn. They introduced Tony Robinson, and he was followed by all 14 of the Vols seniors. Of course, they include Darrell Dickey, the man who replaced him so admirably at quarterback, and Tim McGee, and tied in Jeff Smith, and Eric Swanson, and Jeff Powell, who's come in and played so well for this Vanderbilt team that's overcome so much adversity and are now on the brink of winning the SEC title. If they beat Vanderbilt, it'll be their first championship since 1969. This game began back in 1892. Vanderbilt won almost all of them at the beginning, but then it's been heavily lopsided in Tennessee's favor until right now. There is the leading kicker in the Southeastern Conference, number two in the nation in kicking, Carlos Reves, who will be kicking off for Vanderbilt. Back will be 33 Witherspoon and 96 Parker. Parker on the left, Witherspoon on the right. This game moments away from getting underway in front of a sellout crowd at Neyland Stadium. The sunshine peeking through. That's Clay Parker, two deep in the end zone. He'll touch it down. And the Vanderbilt Commodores will begin on offense from their own 20-yard line. Freshman quarterback, and he is a pure freshman, 18 years old. John Gromos from Crest Hill, Illinois. Carl Wood starts at running back. Carl Parker replacing the injured Everett Crawford, who's the league's leading receiver at the A-back position. Mitchell and Piercy, the wideouts for Vanderbilt. On the offensive line, number 69 near the bottom of your screen, Will Wofford, an all-conference tackle, possibly an All-American. Jim Pop, the Vanderbilt fine tight end, and the rest of the Vanderbilt offensive line. First down, 10 Commodores from the 20. Opening play of this game from Knoxville, Tennessee. Here comes the blitz, and Gromos under pressure. Tried to throw it, incomplete. They say it is not. Now a penalty marker has gone down. They may say it's intentional grounding. Ziegler, number 49, was the man leading the way. Number 59, Hovannik, also back there for Tennessee. Tim, just exactly what Vanderbilt did not need to happen. A penalty for intentional grounding, I think, is coming up here, and that'll mean loss of down. Vanderbilt has had a problem in the interior of their offensive line. As you mentioned, Will Walford is a... Intentional ground in the ball. Loss of down, offense. Will Walford is a possible All-America out of tackle, but they've had some... They've been changing some people around at the center position. That time, Tennessee pressured blitz Ziegler and Miller up the middle put the pressure on uh, Gromos and there were some white shirts in the uh, area of that ball and that's one of those things that could have been called they could have let it go second down 27 from the three yard line 
Wade has given to Carl Woods to get some of it back out near the 10-yard line. Let's look at that Tennessee defensive unit. It is a great one. They have really risen to the occasion this year. The defensive line for Tennessee, Hovannik and Cooper on the outside, Robbie Scott in the middle. Hovannik, the big play man up front. Big play man on the linebacker court, Dale Jones, but they're strong in the middle with Miller and Ziegler. Brian Kimbrough is a freshman. The defensive secondary, they lead the SEC in pass defense. Kramer, Davis, White, and Brown. Chris White, number seven, leads the nation in pass interceptions with nine. It is third down 20 for Vanderbilt now, out to their own 10-yard line. Ramos under pressure again. Incomplete intended for number 12, Carl Parker. Brian Kimbo with pressure once again. Kimbro was right up the middle on Grummel. And Vanderbilt will have to bring in punter Alan Herline to punt out of his end zone to start this game. Down on the field before the game, Bob, just being around the Tennessee players and their coaches kind of verified it. This Tennessee volunteer football team is really ready to go. They're fired up. They've got an SEC championship on the, uh, on the line here. They're going to be a handful for Vanderbilt. Erline standing right in the middle of his end zone. Punts better than 43 yards per punt. Has plenty of time to get it away. Not a good punt. Kramer coming back from the injury at his own 47. He's got some running room. Gets a good block. And Kramer goes down at the 42-yard line. And with excellent field position, here will come who's thrown only one interception, six touchdown passes, and what a job he's done replacing Robinson. Powell will start at tailback, and we're expecting fullback Sam Henderson to start at fullback. It could be Miller. We'll check it as soon as they line up. The offensive receivers are Swanson and McGee, the tight end Smith. And their best tackle is at the right side, two, number 68, Bruce Wilkerson. And it is Jim Miller starting at fullback. Miller and Powell. Powell is 21. Miller, 25. And that's Jeff Powell to the 39-yard line. John Wyndham with the tackle, number 89. The defensive right end for Vanderbilt. The Commodore's defensive unit, as Tim Foley told you, kind of jekylls and hides. We don't know. Some games good, some games not so good. Wyndham and Thomas on the outside. Steve Wade is an all-conference defensive tackle. They're wearing number 90. You'll see him making a lot of big plays today. Fitz and Whaler on the outside and linebacker. Chris Gaines in the middle. He's playing with a broken left wrist. May not play much today. And you see a look at the Vanderbilt defensive backfield. Anderson, Wells, Holt, and Sykes. Second down six, Tennessee at the 39. And they're going to run it again to Jeff Powell. Powell, short of the first down, goes to the 36. He's hit by 90. Steve Wade and number 22, Armando Fitz. Tennessee has really come on as the season has unraveled in the sense that they've become a running football team. When Tony Robinson was playing quarterback, they kind of relied on Tony's golden arm. But since that point in time, they've developed some real runners. And uh, that's what they're doing right now. But don't be surprised to see him trying to get it in the end zone in a hurry through the air. Speaking of a real runner, Keith Davis is in now on third down three in place of Powell. Here's Dickey going to the air. It is complete to Eric Swanson for the first down at the 31-yard line. Number 27, Swanson. He's a senior from San Bernardino, California. Vanderbilt knows what they have to do. They know they have to prevent the big play, so they'll be playing a little bit looser early on in the football game. Somewhere in this first series of downs or in the second series of downs, I, I'd expect, expect a, a play pa pass up over the top, try to get it to McGee. This will be first and 10 at the 31-yard line of Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt with a intentional grounding call and loss of down on their first play from line of scrimmage to put Tennessee in this good field position. There goes Miller. He gets to the 26-yard line. Marvin Thomas, number 98, the defensive left end making the play for Vanderbilt. Jim Miller is a junior from Nashville, Tennessee. It'll be Miller, Howard, Henderson at the fullback position today for Tennessee. We'll see Powell and Keith Davis primarily out of that tailback spot. But Tennessee can play as many as seven backs. They're all pretty good. Second and five from the 26-yard line. No score. 11.51 to go first quarter from Knoxville. It's been raining, but the sunshine is out now. To the tailback. That's Keith Davis. Excuse me, that's Jeff Powell, and he's driven out of bounds at the 21. Fawn Anderson with the play for Vanderbilt. Powell and Davis will be alternating at the tailback spot today for Tennessee. As you, as you see this play develop, the bottom man in your line of scrimmage is a defensive end. You notice he's standing up. Vanderbilt has only, only has two men in a three-point stance. They're trying to give Tennessee a little bit different look. Good job of running by Powell. Breaks that tackle. Run out of bounds by Anderson. 
Another first down for the Volunteers. First down 10 just outside the 20-yard line of Vanderbilt. Miller and Powell in the backfield. Here comes Powell again. Not much this time. A yard or two. Steve Wade and Chris Gaines with a stop. And Jeff Powell, an interesting story. There you look at Daryl Dickey. Now Jeff Powell, number 21, the tailback, transferred to Vanderbilt two years ago, had a redshirt season. He came from William and Mary as a trackster, and this is his first and last year as a tailback for Tennessee, and what a year he's having. He really has. You know, as, as fate would have it, uh, injuries forced him into a playing situation, and he has really responded well. At the 19, it's second down nine, Tennessee. Dickey to go to the air again. It's a screen to Powell. Great sprinter speed, remember. <laughs> to the six-yard line. Tackled by Noah Wells. Tennis, Tennessee player injured. You're going to see it. Uh, we can't tell who that is yet. We'll check it out for you. Tennessee is fortunate here. You're going to see a clip on this play. Dickey comes out, sets it up to the left. And watch number 22 right there. Fitz get picked off. A roll block. That was a clip. Uh, the officials missed that one. Tennessee was fortunate. Good job run by Jeff Powell again. Uh, the Tennessee player that's shaken up is number 87, Joey Klinkscales, the junior wide receiver. Seems to be okay, we're happy to report. He'll be coming off the field. Tennessee's loaded with wide receivers. They call them the University of Wide Receivers. <laughs> there have been so many come through here, and their next one to go to the pros, no doubt, will be Tim McGee. And Clink Scales gets to be next year's star. They seem to have one every year. And they've got a couple redshirt freshmen that they're really excited about, too, Bob, and talking to Walt Harris. First and goal from the six. Here comes Jeff Powell. Bandy strings it out. Powell gets maybe a yard, not much more. It'll be second and goal near the five. Chris Gaines with the with the tackle for Vanderbilt. Gaines is 34. You see, just walking off your screen there to the right, he has that cast on his left hand. It causes him real problems completing his tackles. Fine job on defense by Vanderbilt. In this situation, containment becomes a different element, Bob. Out on the field, you try to turn the play in. Down here, you almost try to string it out toward the sideline. You're not interested in taking that hard uh, upfield position. Second down goal from the five, Tennessee. Scoreless game, first quarter. Neyland Stadium, Knoxville. Dickey. Plenty of time. Touchdown, Tim McGee. working one-on-one -on, -one on Kermit Sykes. Probably the hardest player to stop down in this area of the field if you're going to cover him one-on-one -on -one is the slot receiver. McGee just worked him to the inside, then broke it back to the outside, and Dickey put it on the button. Point after by Reves is good, and as you saw on our graphic, Tim McGee just broke the Tennessee all-time career reception record that had been held by Larry Sievers. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Let's look at the scoring play. At 1 o'clock in your picture, you see number 32, Noel Wells. Dickey looks at him. He knows that now that they're man-to-man -man on the left side of your screen. So they call the play, snap the ball. He knows McGee's working one-on-one -on, -one on Sykes. McGee leans him to the inside, then breaks to the outside. A tough play to make defensively when the ball's thrown well like that. And Tim McGee tied the all-time Tennessee receiving record of 117, held jointly now by McGee and Seavers. His next reception will break the all-time career reception. He already holds the record for touchdowns and holds the record for yardage. And this one's down to the end zone again. And Vanderbilt will come out after Tennessee drove nine plays, 43 yards in nearly four minutes. And that was capped by a five-yard touchdown pass. Joy Klinkscales, the Tennessee wide receiver, 87, who went off the field, uh, injured his shoulder. But we understand Klinkscales will probably come back in the game. First down 10, Vanderbilt, from their own 20-yard line. Trailing 7-0 now. This is Carl Wood. What a room. He's got speed. He may be gone. 
Who can catch him? Sims catches him at the 16-yard line. Make it 86, Terry McDaniel. Tennessee's coming after him again here, Bob. They're trying to get a blitz in up the middle. Always, you see Ziegler going one way, Miller going the other way. And it's wide open, clear. Everybody else in the secondary is running man for man. Kramer's the only one that had vision on the back. Eventually, Terry McDaniel sees, sees the ball and comes back and makes the stop. So Vanderbilt blows right back with a 65-yard run by Carl Wood. First and 10 at the 15-yard line of Tennessee. Woods again. He's got to be tired after running 65 yards. He looked like it. Dale Jones gets him after one. Tennessee has been tremendous on defense all year long. One of the strongest points they have, I think, is minimizing the big play. They're not, certainly not used to seeing anybody run up the middle on them for 68 yards. I'm sure it was a shock to the defensive backs as they turned their head and found the ball. Second down nine, ball just inside the 10. Tennessee leading seven to nothing. Mitchell in motion. Romo. It's complete to the eight, not much gain on that. To Carl Parker, number 12, and down he goes. Obviously a very important possession for Vanderbilt. Let me check that, Tim. That ball got about to the eight and a half yard line. Uh, so it will bring up third down three. The first down marker just about the six yard line. We saw Tennessee, uh, Vanderbilt in this area against Alabama tried to throw the ball consistently. Then again, we've seen them run the ball effectively from this area. Let's see what they choose to do now. Third down three, Vanderbilt. Parker in motion. Here comes Tennessee. Ramos away from trouble for a moment. But not long. Down he goes at the 23. Kelly Ziegler with the sack, number 49. And Tennessee ran there just like there was a hole in the dam, a loss of 13 yards. <laughs> they, packed, they packed as many people defensively as you can pack in between the tackles. Look at him coming up. <laughs> There's Chris White. He gets picked off by Woods. And then... Ziegler comes clean around the outside and yanks him down. And now it's going to be a 38-yard field goal attempt by Alan Herline, the junior from Atlanta. And nothing's going right for Vanderbilt. They cannot score. Tennessee continues to lead 7-0 with 7-17 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Tennessee leads 7-0, 7-17 to go, quarter number one, and following the missed field goal attempt, Tennessee will get the ball at the line of scrimmage. That's the 21-yard line of the Volunteers. So the 65-yard run by Carl Woods for Vanderbilt proved to no avail. Dickey's going upstairs, looking for McGee, incomplete at the 31-yard line. He was double-covered and never get, did get deep on number 28, Vaughn Anderson. It was Sam Grady. If you'll excuse me on the numbers, we're about 15 stories above the field here, and sometimes 83 can look like an 88. That's Grady. He's the sprinter from Atlanta, the junior. It, it really is tough doing a game. It's like doing a game from Sky Cam. I mean, you're, you're looking <laughs> straight down at the players, and the, the numbers are difficult to pick out. Uh, Grady, of course, is a speedster. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, they tried to get a big one in there. They tried to get a big strike in there, break Vanderbilt's back early on. Second down, 10. Here comes Keith Davis, and Davis goes down at the 25-yard line. Mark Whaler with the stop. Penalty marker is down in the defensive backfield of Vanderbilt. And it's interesting, they inserted Grady at, the at that point in time in the game to try to get it in over at the top, Bob. I think that uh, goes along with what we felt about Timmy McGee. He's an excellent receiver, but not really as as much a deep threat as, say, Galt and Hancock have been, or Stanley Morgan in the past. It's going to be a penalty against Tennessee for personal foul. The man in the white hat is the referee today, Dick Burleson. You see the rest of the officials, Williams, Towns, Lorino, Delaney, Thomas, and Daopolis. But I think that the receivers that achieve 
the greatest status in the NFL and professional football pl professional football are not the speedsters, are not the people that rely strictly on their ability to run past people. They're the receivers like Tim McGee who have great body control and understanding of defense as they work themselves open and Personal can make the catch inside. During the run, offense, repeat the down. And they'll spot the ball at the 12-yard line. Making it now second down and 20. Tennessee leading 7 0, 6.50 to go, first quarter. 35 Howard in the backfield for Tennessee. Tennessee in that passing set. Plenty of time for Dickey. And it's complete to 81 Jeff Smith. And they'll say that Smith went out of bounds at the 45 yard line. No pressure on Dickey at all, but let's watch Mark Whaler try to cover on this play. Make that Chris Gaines. Chris Gaines dropping back in there, and this is a perfect throw by Dickey. Good job by Chris Gaines reading the quarterback, moving to the football, but a beautifully thrown ball by Daryl Dickey. Just perfect. McGee had cleared it out for Smith, and Dickey dropped it in there. First down, 10 Tennessee. Running a quick opener out here near the 50-yard line. That was Sam Henderson, number 43. The fifth back that Tennessee's used so far. I told you they have a whole stable of thoroughbreds back there. And we're going to see a couple of more come in here now. I think one of the biggest changes in college football over the last five or six years is the amount of people that play in every game. You know, when O.J. Simpson was at Southern Cal, nobody played. He carried the ball 35 times a game, and that was it. Second down five, Tennessee, right at the 50-yard line. Hand off to Sam Henderson. He got about a yard. Penalty marker is down on the far side of the field. He was hit by 34 gains and 90 Steve Wade for Vanderbilt. You know, in talking about that... Uh, Against Vanderbilt. They, Tennessee does the same thing on defense. They'll play seven or eight defensive backs. Uh, and then uh, Mike Archer at LSU does the same thing. They play uh, up to 10 defensive backs in a game. Whereas in the past, if you were a starter, you played the whole way until the game was put away. Then they came with the second team. But they're involving more young people in every game. I think what they're doing is developing more depth, and they're keeping the attention of the players. They're keeping them happy. Since they're not starting, uh, they still get them enough playing time so they're not despondent and leave and go All someplace tried. else. Defense, repeat second down. And it's almost enough for the first down, but not quite. They move it just inside just outside the 45-yard line. And that will bring up second down in just inches for Tennessee with double tight ends, 81 Smith, 89 Hendricks. McGee, the only receiver, single setback, Sam Henderson. And he gets the ball and the first down easily to the 41-yard line. Tennessee keeps their drive alive. They started at the 21-yard line. Tennessee driving for the Sugar Bowl. A victory today takes them to New Orleans Big on New Year's Day. <laughs> Big Sam Henderson. When I, when I see Sam Henderson, I think of the big running backs. And whenever you think of big running backs, you think about weight control. You know, because they all have a problem with that. I saw an article in the paper the other day on William Perry. He weighs in twice a week. And it's in his contract if he weighs under 310 pounds, he gets $1,000 per weigh. <laughs> Good, that's more than I used to make. That's the famous Bob Horner clause. I think Bob broke the way in Major League Sports for that clause with the Atlanta Braves. First down 10, Tennessee at the 41 and a half yard line of Vanderbilt. Volunteers lead 7 to nothing. 5.20 to go, quarter number one. Dickey, no pressure. McGee at the 32 yard line, close to the first down. Chris Gaines with a tackle. Tim, there's absolutely no pressure on Daryl Dickey at all. I guess they're dropping into coverage as we take a look at the secondary of Vanderbilt. Good read. You see Armando Fitz locates the receiver, moves to it, but Dickey is just putting it right in the perfect spot. I think I underestimated his, his ability, his talent level when he first started to play, Bob. He is being just as effective as if Tony Robinson were in the game, and I think that they've got their offense geared back up to that level again. At first, I think they restricted his activity, gave him a few less choices, but now I think they've got a lot of confidence in him. 
Tim McGee just broke the Tennessee career receiving record, 118, breaking the record had, that had been previously held by Larry Seavers, who played back in the middle, early 70s when Tennessee was in some kind of slump. They didn't go to a bowl from, well, for several years during the early and mid-70s. Here comes Keith Davis, and he gets to the 24, hit by 34, Chris Gaines with his fourth tackle of the afternoon. Keith Davis, freshman from Nashville, the leading rusher for this University of Tennessee team. 611 yards on the year. Only two touchdowns for Davis, though. He averages just under five yards per carry. This will be second down three. The line of scrimmage at the 24-yard line of Vanderbilt. Volunteers lead 7-0. Davis. Look at the cut. Two Vanderbilt players missed the tackle in the backfield. A lot of missed tackles so far. John Fouts finally gets him. A freshman, number 74, makes the stop of Keith Davis. You mentioned Jeff Powell having his one and only year this year, running with the football, and how good he looked. But you can be sure that Johnny Majors is glad that that rascal's a freshman. We talked about it last week. His ability to change direct directions and his quick feet are going to make him a great running back for Tennessee. Third down two. Volunteers. The ball just outside the 23-yard line of Vanderbilt. Dickey. Wide open. McGee to the nine. Kermit Sykes makes the stop. Well, it looks like Vanderbilt is going to have real problems with Tennessee's great receiver, Tim McGee, unless they come up with some way to stop him. Hard man to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Once again in the slot position, takes it down, breaks it hard to the inside, gets a body position on Sykes and makes the catch. Tough pattern to stop. That little quicken. If you don't have any, any underneath support, any help to the inside, uh, Kermit Sykes is on an island. First and goal at the nine, volunteers. Henderson, Davis in the backfield. Here comes Keith Davis right up the middle. Power runner to the six-yard line. Hit there by 34 gains and 89, John Wyndham. 2.51 to go, first quarter. Tennessee 7, Vanderbilt nothing. Vanderbilt got a 65-yard run from their running back, Carl Wood, but was Vanderbilt was unable to come away with any points at all. Chris Gaines a little slow to get up for Vanderbilt. He's been injured this year. Had broken left wrist, a cast on his wrist now. Had an ankle problem in the spring, too. Illness in the middle of the season. Bronchitis, a bronchial illness. Been a rough year for that young man. Chris Gaines is only a sophomore and has the ability to be a great linebacker. I don't think there's any question about that. The coaches at Vanderbilt He's a say, say he's uh, got great ability and just a, a wonderful attitude, just a wonderful young man to work with, and, and he's a leader in there on defense, too. Even though he's a sophomore, people have a lot of confidence in him, he and Steve Wade. Second down, goal from just outside the five-yard line. Tennessee in that half set. Here's Dickey, short drop. And it hits Kermit Sykes in the back. Kermit Sykes broke up the play, but didn't know it till he was hit with it. Intended for 88, Tim McGee. Once again, Timmy McGee working one-on-one -on -one against Kermit Sykes as, as he tries to politic there with the referee. Watch this now. Good job by Sykes. Sets himself, takes away the inside, jams with his hands. Now he's got a trail. You can push off. That's legal. Now you got to get in that trail. He breaks on the ball, tries to get his head around. This is the first. Now that's pass interference right there. That's pass interference. This is the, that's the first ball that Dickey has thrown off the mark all afternoon. Third and goal from outside the five-yard line. And we'll see again in that pass set. Dickey going to the air. Here comes a blitz. Dickey goes down. It's incomplete. No penalty markers. Dickey got great pressure from 32 Noel Wells, who came right up to shoot. You can see the results of the pressure. And Tennessee, leading 7-0, sends the field goal unit out. About a 22, 23-yard field goal attempt coming up here. You have to be confident as a defensive back to play man-to-man -man coverage down in this area. You know, if you give him a yard one way or another, you're going to look silly, and he's going to be holding the ball up in the air and doing his little dance. So you have to, you know, you have to play it aggressively and with confidence, and you almost have to welcome that challenge. Here's Reves, who's 21 out of 25. 
make it 22 out of 26 on the year. And with that kick, as of right now, Reves takes over the scoring lead in the SEC. This is Turner Network Television. So Carlos Reves will kick off now after hitting his 22nd field goal of the year. The brother of Quad Reves, who graduated last year and is now kicking for the Miami Dolphins. And Carlos has become really the leading kicker in the Southeastern Conference this year. Parker and Witherspoon deep for Vanderbilt, trailing 10 0 now. 2.18 to go, first quarter. Play Parker, he won't return this one. The Vanderbilt will get their third opportunity with the football in this first quarter. The first time they had the football, they were called for intentional grounding. That man 15, John Grumos was, and Vanderbilt never got out of the hole. Tennessee drove down for a touchdown. Second drive, Vanderbilt got a 65-yard run from the line of scrimmage from Carl Woods. He was caught from behind by Terry McDaniel. Then Vanderbilt, after a sack, uh, was driven back and knocked out of field goal range. Her line missed on a field goal attempt, and thus we've got our 10 to nothing score. Tennessee Bob has five defensive backs in the game on first down. From the 20-yard line, Vanderbilt ball. A back, Carl Parker in motion. Ramos completes it to Parker. Gain of about five or six yards on the play out to the 26-yard line. Parker playing in place of the injured Everett Crawford, the leading receiver in the SEC. But Carl Parker, a converted wide receiver, is a good, good receiver also. Parker come in motion. This is, this is helping Gromos get a read. Is it man-to-man? -man? Is it zone? Parker working his way upfield, trying to find the open area. Cur curls towards Ziegler, turns his back to him to try to protect the ball. Gromos lays it in there on time. Second down for Vanderbilt from the 26-yard line. Carl Wood. Close to the first down. I believe he's just shy of the 30 and the first down. I want to tell you, Knoxville has gone crazy this year over the Volunteers. I mean, this is the biggest thing to hit Knoxville since 1969, maybe with the exception of the World's Fair. <laughs> I drove over from Nashville yesterday morning, and it was like an orange river coming over here. I just all these yellow flags flapping out. I mean, excuse me, orange flags flapping out the windows. We have freshman Eric Longfellow, 45, in at the A-back position. It is third down one Vanderbilt. Carl Woods gets the first down to the 31 or two yard line over the right side. A penalty marker is down in the Tennessee backfield. George McIntyre. George has grown a few hairs since he's been at Vanderbilt. SEC coach of the year back in 82. In that year, Vanderbilt defeated Tennessee in Nashville. As a matter of fact, the quarterback of that team, Witt Taylor, is on the sidelines. Has been an assistant coach all year long for Vanderbilt. He's got a white cap on on the sidelines. He threw for almost 400 yards in that game. Dick Burleson talking to the officials. Apparently some confusion among the officials there as to just what the penalty marker was. Often when it's thrown in the defensive backfield, it's a delay of game call. But if it's a delay of game, they've got to stop the play. an eligible player maybe they had 12 players on the field the call is against Tennessee illegal participation too many players on the field participating defense first down that's the call and it goes out to the 47 yard line Vanderbilt ball, first down 10, 55, 54, 53, and counting in the first quarter. Tennessee 10, Vanderbilt nothing, but the best field position of the day, except for the 65-yard run for the Commodores. Carl Woods inside the 50, penetrating Tennessee territory. Woods had a 65-yarder on the second possession, but uh, Vanderbilt was unable to capitalize on it. No points at all. Woods has 76 yards on the day now. Going without a huddle, Bob. Second down, seven from the just inside the fifth. Romo completes it. For the first down, I believe, to number 12, Carl Parker. One of the reasons a team will go without a huddle, obviously it uh, confuses the defense a bit, but Tennessee substitutes a lot, moves a lot of people in and out, and it keeps them from doing that. 
keeps them from getting those six defensive backs into the football game in a possession situation. I doubt we'll get another play underway in this quarter. Nine seconds and counting in the first quarter. For our stations along the line, we've missed commercial position six. Our next commercial will be position seven. We'll make up the missed break in the next quarter, which will come up after this timeout. At the end of one, it's Tennessee 10. Vanderbilt nothing. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Tennessee, they call it the gateway to the Smokies. Beautiful city, beautiful terrain, one of the most beautiful parts of the country. I toured most of it driving up from Atlanta yesterday with <laughs> my son Rob as we took a shortcut through the Smoky Mountains. A quick five and a half hours later, we were here. <laughs> First down 10, Vanderbilt. That's the 42. Rumble. Has a man open. It picked off by Charles Davis. Fumble. Tennessee popped it out of the air and has the ball. Boy, you talk about things going right. Number 14 with the ball is Perry Brown. When you're hot, you're hot. It was Kimbrough with great pressure on Gromos. Good job. 55. Excuse me. Good job reading the football here by Charlie Davis. The ball's not being thrown to his man. It's, it's overthrown. He's trying to get it down the middle. I believe it was underthrown. Davis makes the catch. And now here he goes upfield. Charlie Davis, kind of the quarterback of that defensive secondary for Tennessee. Kyle, the ball gets popped out. He's been watching Chris White carry the football. But Tennessee comes up with it. Hildred, I know you like that. Davis with his third interception of the year. First down 10, Tennessee. Now they've got the good field position. Dickey with absolutely no pressure on him. Incomplete through it behind number 21, Jeff Powell. Tim, I don't want to sound like I'm beating, uh, riding a dead horse here or beating a broken drum. Either one you'd like to choose. Or, or, but, or, or, or uh, <laughs> it seems to me that Vanderbilt's going to have to find some way to put a little pressure on Dickey. I can understand not sending everybody, but he's just got all day. Yeah, yeah they, they watched the Kentucky game last year. Kentucky really got hurt when they started to try to blitz Tennessee. And uh, I think you're right. They're going to, they'll try to blitz one, or, but they won't go to the big blitz because they don't want a big play against them. Second down 10 from the 47. Here comes Keith Davis to the 42-yard line. Tackled by number 36, Mark Whaler, a junior from Cincinnati, Ohio. See Ron Zook. See if we can hear what he's got to say. Talking to Terry Brown there. Ron was a defensive coordinator of Kansas. Larry Marmee, who was at that time a defensive coordinator at Tennessee, brought him in as a secondary coach, and he just does a fine got job. Really, uh, really relaxed coach. You watch him. He doesn't stand still much. <laughs> Third down seven, Dickey. Again, no pressure. Oh, my goodness gracious. Eric Swanson, touchdown. A 43-yard touchdown pass. isn't doing much for the spirit in Baton Rouge, Louisiana or Tuscaloosa, Alabama, is it, Bob? Tennessee wins today. Neither LSU nor Alabama, no matter what happens, could go to the Sugar Bowl. Reveille's with the point after, and it's good. And 93,000 cheering the volunteers, leading 17 to nothing, and Dickey has all day long. Swanson had curled. It wasn't there, and then someone had fallen down, just a mistaken assignment. He was wide open. Ducks McIntyre works his way into the end zone. We'll be back in a minute. 11 for 126 yards. Swanson found himself wide open, looked around, started waving his hands furiously. Dickey located him downfield. And There's what happens to Tim McGee <laughs> almost every play, but Vanderbilt's loaded with receivers, so if they can't get McGee, they can get somebody else. That's 96, Clay Parker running out of bounds on the kickoff return. Watch McGee here. Runs a curl. 
stumbles, stumbles forward <laughs> from a defensive standpoint. That's another touchdown. Yeah. They just don't count six for that. That's right. Or a fall down or a knockdown. Now, Tennessee, when we talk about being loaded with receivers, we're not kidding. They got a lot of them. 13.51 to go first half. Tennessee 17, Vanderbilt nothing. The route may be on. It'll depend on this drive of Vanderbilt for sure. Carl Wood doing a good job running the ball. He's playing hurt too. Injured his shoulder last week. Scoring a touchdown against Virginia Tech actually two weeks ago. Wood gets out to the 29-yard line. And already in this ball game, Carl Woods with seven carries and 88 yards. And there's young Daryl Dickey. Yeah, hello, New Orleans. Yeah. I'll take a room for one, please. <laughs> He's talking to Walt Harris upstairs in that phone, who is the offensive coordinator, just a fine young teacher, fine young football coach. Second down, four from the 29-yard line. Dromos, and he's got time this time. Throws right into the coverage, but a penalty marker goes down, as does Carl Parker. Coming over the back was 39, Tim Welch, who is in there as a nickel back for Tennessee on the play. That's one of those situations where you're in the right spot as a defensive player, and the ball's coming. You don't have enough time to work yourself around in front. And it's awful. It takes an awfully lot, a lot of patience to sit there and wait for the ball to get to the receiver and then try to knock it out. There's the call. 15-yard penalty. First down, Vanderbilt. A dangerous throw by Gromos. Lays it out there in the flat. You're going to see the receiver. It's pretty well covered. Defense, automatic first down. It was a good call by the official. Welsh made contact before the ball had arrived. Spot the ball at the 33 and a half yard line. Vanderbilt ball. Trailing 17 nothing. 13 minutes to go first half. Eric Longfellow, 45, in at the A back position now, a freshman for Vanderbilt. Carl Woods with the ball. Nowhere to run. 36 yard line, and down he goes. Lavoisier Fisher from Nashville. Number 40 making the stop for Tennessee as you look at the sideline of the Volunteers. And some scores. Florida leading Florida State 14 to nothing in the first period. That's at Gainesville. Neil Anderson scored twice. Two touchdown runs by Neil Anderson. Playoffs there. Georgia Southern out in front. Georgia, Georgia Tech playing tonight at 8.15 in Atlanta, Georgia. Some of you folks on TNT will have an opportunity to see that game tonight with Lindsey Nelson and Paul Hornet. Second down, eight, Vanderbilt. From the 36. Here comes the Tennessee Blitz again. Gromos completes it to Parker, but Parker does not get to the first down. He falls down out of bounds at the 42 yard line. So it'll bring up a third down and a long one. And that man, John Gromos, brought in after Mark Ratcher, the junior starting quarterback, was injured, and he's been under pressure all year. He has, and he has stood up under the pressure well. Uh, we saw him early on in the season against Alabama, and uh, he looked like any young man just out of high school would look. But a uh, totally different air about him now as he plays and directs this team. Third and one from the 42. Gromos is going to throw on third and one. It's complete for the first down, but just barely goes to Parker for about three or four yards. Number 12, Carl Parker. First down, Vanderbilt. And Gromos now getting some statistics, passing the ball. Five out of seven for 30 yards. He's already thrown one interception. Five of those, all five catches have been to Parker. Parker, as you mentioned, is uh, in there as a, as a substitute, playing for Everett Crawford. And he's got the great hands. Probably not as good a runner as Everett Crawford. And... And against Tennessee, you want to be able to run the ball a little bit. First and 10 at the 46-yard line of Vanderbilt, trailing 17 to nothing. Parker in motion. Here comes Carl Wood. Gets another good block. And he got outside again. He fumbled the ball. It's Tennessee's ball at the 40-yard line. Two Vanderbilt turnovers. Dale Jones is the man with the ball. He's been the big play guy all year long. Woods got 14 yards on the carry. Looked like it was raked out of there, Tim. Let's see it as we look at it again. As we've said before, this is something that Ken Donahue and the Tennessee defensive coaches talk a lot about, turnovers. Charlie Davis coming up, grabbing a hold. It just fell out. Just, it looked like it just fell out. Now, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say Davis popped it out, but it didn't look like it. Well, then that's not. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the 40-yard line, first down, Jen, Tennessee. Tennessee doesn't need any breaks here today. They're making their own. Out to the 43-yard line goes 35, William Howard at fullback. We talked going into the game, and, and as we prepared for this, Tim, about the importance of the turnovers, Tennessee leads the nation in giveaway takeaways. Coming into this game, plus 19, meaning they've taken the ball 19 more times going into the game than they had given it away, now up to 21. And as you see, Vanderbilt last in the league with a negative 10. And the year that Vanderbilt went to the Hall of Fame Bowl back in 82, Vanderbilt was, Vanderbilt was plus 19. It is a significant statistic, winning and losing. Second down, seven. Jeff Powell, short of the 45-yard line, Mark Whaler with the stop, and we're going to pause five seconds for station identification. And then, and then you see Dale Jones there. Dale Jones was, uh, you know, I might mention this, he was overlooked in the UPI All-SEC team and probably has had a good a year, with the exception of Michael Brooks, as any linebacker in the SEC. I think that's an injustice also. Dale Jones is a great linebacker. Third down six from the 44-yard line. Dickey. With pressure. Vanderbilt finally pressures Dickey, and it pays off. Marvin Thomas, number 98, shooting up the side. And this is just a fine job of coverage by the Vanderbilt secondary. Dickey looking, looking, no one there. Thomas comes around, up the gut. Steve Wade around the outside and throw him to the ground. Good decision by Dickey. Nothing, nothing open. Decided to eat the ball. And Tennessee is going to have to punt the ball. And their regular punter, Bob Garman, the sophomore from Birmingham, will punt. He has a sore hamstring. Let's see how effective he can be. Mike McIntyre is the punt returner for Vanderbilt. He averages only 1.9 yards per punt return. Usually lets it bounce. I think he's going to do it that way again. And Garman gets a great roll, and it goes dead just inside the 20. So Bob Garman, sore leg and all, gets away a fine punt for Tennessee. That may as well go well for Tennessee, too. Everything else is. This is Turner Network Television. In the decade of the 80s, 32 SEC teams have been invited to compete in postseason bowl games, including five this year, Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, LSU, and Tennessee. All 10 teams have made postseason appearances in the 80s, and in the history of postseason bowls, five SEC schools rank in the top 12 in total bowl appearances. Another indication of the strength of Southeastern Conference football. Tennessee, first down 10, or excuse me, Vanderbilt, first down 10 at the 19-yard line. That was a 46-yard punt by Garmin. Carl Woods hemmed in the backfield. He's going to lose yardage. Darren Miller, 45, 39. Tim Welch is back there. Dale Jones, of course, the leader on that Tennessee defensive unit. Let's watch him in action. Number 54 for the Volunteers. He is at the center of the storm. Look at him. He's blitzing inside. Havanek scraping to the outside. Jones causes pressure in there, disrupts the timing of the play, forces Woods outside, and then came that famous Tennessee pursuit. Second down, 11. Tennessee, 17, Vanderbilt, nothing. 8.55 to go in the first half, and down goes Woods again. Darren Miller, number 45. Tennessee dominating in every phase of the game here in the first half. Tried to run a draw, just didn't have time to develop. Often, if you sense a blitz up the middle, a team will check to a trap up the middle to see if they can catch a quick seam and do what Vanderbilt did in their second possession, get a 68-yard run. That's often a play that you want to try to get to. Now Tennessee has six defensive backs in the game. On a third down, 16 Vanderbilt. They're in trouble at their own 13-yard line. Tennessee rushing three men. Ramos going upstairs. A great catch, but it'll be ruled incomplete by Carl Parker. Leaping body parallel to the turf, but out of bounds. It's a great athletic catch. What's this? Beautiful catch. Great concentration. But Parker would have had to be 10 feet tall to get his, get his feet down in bounds. Alan Herline will come in to punt the ball away for Vanderbilt. Kramer goes back, and Tennessee is going to have, unless something crazy happens, is going to have very excellent field position once again. Well, against Mississippi, we saw Tennessee block a punt. Let's see if they pressure here or they try to get a good return with Kramer. They've got 10 men at the line. 
Chris White blocked that punt against Ole Miss. Erline gets it away. Pretty good punt, too. Driving Kramer back to his own 38-yard line. Is there good coverage? Yes, an excellent open field tackle at the 41-yard line by number 35, Mac McCarroll, a backup linebacker. 7.50 remaining in the first half. Tennessee 17, Vanderbilt nothing. Tennessee's great linebacker. Both Tim and I believe he's all-conference. and He's certainly played All-American of the games we've seen. There have been some great linebackers and defensive players here. Doug Adkins, a defensive lineman, uh, of course, in the College Football Hall of Fame just this year and great years with the Monsters of the Midway in Chicago. And uh, Jack Reynolds, Hacksaw Reynolds, played on that 69 Tennessee team that last won the SEC title. I think Steve Kiner was on that team, too. First down 10, Tennessee. Ball at the 43-yard line. Dickey just overthrew McGee. Had a nice screen set up on the near side. And McGee just couldn't get a hold of it. There's Kramer offering some advice to the coach. <laughs> and the coach says, I'll offer right, the advice, right, young yeah. man. You listen. <laughs> and here's how it looks. And you do that upfield. And, uh, Ron, I meant to. He said, yeah. I meant to. And he just loves to coach. And he, and he's one of those fellows that can't sit still before the game. He's walking all over the place. And uh, reminds me a lot of a fellow that used to be here as a defensive backfield coach, George Katavlis. From the 43, second down 10, Tennessee. Here comes a blitz by Vanderbilt. Dickey in trouble. He just screens it over to the left side, though. Keith Davis, good coverage by Vanderbilt. And Davis is going to lose yardage. Kermit Sykes will get credit for the tackle. Excellent pressure up the middle by Vanderbilt on Dickey. Dickey threw the screen to the left side, but uh, Vanderbilt was still there. And it got Smokey, the blue tick hound, just ecstatic with joy. He's got to calm down. His heart can't take it. But he's got to learn how to disguise his emotion. <laughs> he's doing it now. That's it. Good job. Smokey. I needed him when I was lost in the Smoky Mountains yesterday. <laughs> Where were you when I needed you? Third down, 13 at the 40, Tennessee now. Dickey. Again, plenty of time. Again, wide open is McGee to the 31-yard line. Vaughn Anderson with the tackle. McGee, what a day he's having. A 29-yard reception this time. They're running with a man-to-man -man underneath. The defensive back, Anderson, has got to read that ball. When there's that much air under the ball and you're the deep help, you have to make the play here. And uh, that time he played the receiver more than he did the ball, and as a result, McGee made the catch. Tennessee first and 10 at the 31-yard line of Vanderbilt. Dickey play face. Again, all day to throw. But he can't find anybody. And finally, number 89, John Wyndham gets him. And there's a loss back here of seven or eight yards to the 39-yard line. Dickey had a good five or six seconds to throw the ball. But if you can't get it away in four or five, you're going to be in trouble. And that time, a good job of coverage by Thon Anderson was working man-to-man -man against Swanson. Swanson ran a sideline pattern. Anderson right in his pocket. That's who Dickey wanted. And Vanderbilt pressure got there before he had to time to get to that secondary receiver. Second time Dickey's gone down today. Second down 17 from the 38-yard line. Tennessee 17, Vanderbilt nothing. Here comes Keith Davis. Big hole. To the 24-yard line. Tackled by 22 Armando Fitz. Tennessee needs to go to the 21 for the first down. That was a 14-yard gain. You know why he's going to be a great back, Bob? Because he's able to change directions without significantly slowing his speed. You now, keep, keeping that progress, watch him run here, keeping that progress toward the goal line while he's changing directions. And look at this balance. Good movement, still running, still working. Good job by Keith Davis. Classic size, too. Six feet, 190. Third down three, Tennessee. There goes Swanson. Touchdown! great individual effort by Eric Swanson. Holt right there with him. He makes the catch. Holt trying to find the handle on him. Can't do it. Swanson breaks loose and strides into the end zone. That may be the best stride into the end zone we've seen all year. He, he's from 
a Tennessee walking receiver. Right. <laughs> Here's Reves with a point after. The route is on. Tennessee 24. Vanderbilt nothing. 5-11 to go first half. And here's Swanson again. And Holt just missed the tackle. See, the defensive back should have vision in on the quarterback. If Holt would have been looking to the inside, at least for the original set, he could have seen the ball on the way. We'll be back in a minute. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Two touchdown catches today. Everybody gathered around in there, Tim. That's what, one of the things McGee was saying before the game is, you guys always surround me after I do something well. You try to get in the shot. And Clay Parker decides to touch it down in the end zone again. And the crowd here starting to chant Sugar Bowl. And the white flakes you see on the turf here, that is not snow, folks. It's sugar. At least the Sugar Bowl is a safer bowl to go to than the Orange Bowl, right? <laughs> Start throwing oranges. Citrus Bowl, they throw grapefruits. Kenny Weatherspoon and Carl Parker in the backfield for Vanderbilt now. First down, 10 Commodores at the 20. Ramos. Oh, my. Kovanic with the sack. This is like watching a car wreck. It's not much fun. John Gromos dropping back, sets up, nobody there. And he gets a lineman just shoved right Darryl back Holt, into Holt, I think, 51. Daryl Holt, and uh, down he goes. Hovannik, 6'3", 245, Holt 6'3", 260, pretty good matchup there. But Hovannik got Holt back on his heels. Second down, 23, Vanderbilt now. Gromos out of his own end zone. Incomplete intended for Jim Pop. And way downfield, wide open. I think it was Tony Piercy, but uh, Ramos didn't see him, and Pop dropped the ball. We've seen him drop several this year. He was disappointed that he did not make the UPI all-conference team as a tight end, but frankly, I'm not sure he's had an all-conference season, Jim. As a matter of fact, they didn't even put a tight end on the UPI team. as uh, Two quarterbacks and three running backs and no tight end. <laughs> well, Shula could play tight end. <laughs> Mike Shula and Kerwin Bell were both named quarterbacks on the UPI All-Southeastern Conference team. Wide receivers were Tim McGee here of Tennessee and Al Bell of Alabama. Vanderbilt's Will Walford made the team a tackle. And Gromos just goes down, gets the ball away, looked for Piercy out here at about the 16-yard line. Oh, they're just laying their ears back now. And you got to hurt for George McIntyre and the Commodores because they've got a lot more than they are capable of handling here today. George McIntyre tried to uh, try to get his team ready, tried to get them to believe that uh, that they could handle his Tennessee football team. But, uh, it's a hard sell. Well, of course, they're in-state rivals, and they compete against each other in the recruiting wars, and Tennessee wins big in that recruiting war for year after year. Tennessee really has a larger field to choose from. Good punt by her line. Kramer with a fair catch, and uh, that's going to be a long one. That was a 48-yard punt by Alan Herline. And we'll be back in just a moment to Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Tennessee on the way to the Sugar Bowl. 24 to nothing. They lead Vanderbilt. Four minutes to go, first half. Tennessee fans, on the left is retiring athletic director Bob Woodruff, and on the right is the new athletic director, Doug Dickey. The last time Tennessee won the title, Doug Dickey was coaching this Tennessee team back in 69, and he has come home to replace... Bob Woodruff. And Woodruff has had a great career as athletic director. And Doug Dickey, of course, watching his son Daryl play out here. A good combination of, of minds there. This will be second down 10 from the 45-yard line. We talked about, you were talking about recruiting earlier, and uh, I said that Vanderbilt had a smaller group to choose from, and it's just because academically it's a lot tougher at Vanderbilt than it than it is at most schools in the country. Second down, 10 from the 45-yard line. Tennessee ball, Daryl Dickey. It is complete, and they're going to spot it at the 48-yard line. Let's hold it. Do they say complete? I believe so. Swanson, the intended receiver. No, incomplete, out of bounds. 
They'll bring it back. Swanson is usually the split end away from McGee and, and Clink Scales. Could have gone either way. Yeah, the referee was right on it. And most of the time, when they're right there, they make the right call. Tennessee says, with the 24-0 lead, right. three minutes to go in the halftime, we'll give you several of those before we argue. Everything going right for the Volunteers. A lot of people wondered if they were the best team in the SEC this year to go to the Sugar Bowl. Well, they're going to finish after this victory today unless Vanderbilt stages a miraculous comeback with a 5-1 and one record. You have to say they just flatly are, period. It's complete to Jeff Smith. First down, Tennessee. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line of Vanderbilt. Whaler covering on the play. A 15-yard gain. Tennessee beat Alabama. A beat Auburn early and got everybody's attention. 38-20 up here in Knoxville when Tony Robinson had such a great game. And then Robinson got hurt against Alabama and Daryl Dickey came in in that game. And we televised here, on, I hope you saw, on your TNT station. And then Tennessee just kept plugging. Primarily their defense rose to the occasion. Defense played real well uh, in the last half of that Alabama game. They hung on to win against Georgia Tech. Uh, they they kind of sputtered and stuttered, but they have found their offense. Davis going to lose a yard or so. Hit in the backfield by 34, Chris Gaines. So these... Bandsman will be making a trip to New Orleans. Everybody in Knoxville talking about the trip to the Sugar Bowl. Matter of fact, Johnny Major said, I just wish these folks would quit talking Sugar Bowl until after today's game. I tell you what, I was in Baton Rouge, ate again at Phil's Oyster Bar and uh, on Monday. And I'm going to invest in that Oyster yeah, Bar. I'll tell you what, that's good stuff. <laughs> and and uh, they were talking about the Sugar Bowl in Baton Rouge, of course, they were hoping for a miracle, hoping Vandy could beat Tennessee so they'd have an opportunity to go. Second down 11, Darrell Dickey. Vandy tried some pressure, but Tennessee blocked it well. It is complete again to 88. Tim McGee gains with a tackle. McGee with his fifth catch on the afternoon. Setting new standards for a Tennessee wide receiver. Little peek to the inside, trying to see man-to-man or zone, trying to see where the pressure is going to come from. Dickey delivers the ball on time. Vanderbilt playing a zone defense. See, you're in a tough situation. You know you have to blitz to get pressure, but then you're not really confident that your people can cover their receivers man to man. So, you know, it's almost a losing situation, which, whichever card you play. Dickey has thrown for three touchdowns and 204 yards here in the first half. Great grab by Swanson again. Nice catch. And a penalty marker down at the 17-yard line. Holt was covering on the play. With some assistance from our TBS sideline crew. Swanson having himself a good afternoon. Swanson, the best blocker, best hands of the receivers. McGee, the best routes. Clink scales the fastest. I mean, Tennessee can give you any kind of receiving weapon you want. Face mask against Vanderbilt. Isn't that amazing? Uh, because the coaches said that Swanson probably has the best hands on the team. Considering the catches I've seen McGee make, that's that's really quite a statement. There's the mark off against Vanderbilt, and they spot it to the 13-yard line. We're very proud to be the home of the Goodwill Games Five in 1986. We hope you'll be joining Defense. us for our coverage of those games July 5th through the 20th. Our coordinating producer, Ken Fouts, is with us here today in Knoxville. Preparations underway. 18 sports. At least 40 nations will be participating. It'll be my pleasure to host those games from Moscow next summer. It's an experience I'm looking forward to, and we certainly hope you'll join us in our coverage of the 1986 Goodwill Games. First down, 10, Tennessee from the 13, and Dickey calls timeout with a minute 58 to go in the first half of play. Later this afternoon, Auburn and Alabama play in their annual rivalry in Birmingham, Alabama, but that game won't mean much if Tennessee goes ahead and wins, it'll mean, <laughs> I say that, I can hear him in Alabama right, right now saying, what do you mean it won't mean much? It won't mean much in regard to the SEC race, folks, is what I mean much. Halftime, proud of the Southland Band from Tennessee. An interview with Paul on my way to the Hall of Fame Horning. He'll be inducted next Tuesday night, and Tim and I will be there and be proud to join Paul Horning as he's inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Of course, we'll have scores and highlights from the games today. That uh, Auburn-Alabama game starts uh, at 3.30 this afternoon. Yeah, we both used to watch Paul when we were in grade school. Yes, we did. We were just young. Well, he was fantastic. I remember I'd 
wanted to get one of those Notre Dame helmets like he used to wear when I was in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> I know you call him Uncle Paul. I'll remind him of that when uh, you and he are working together on the All-American Bowl telecast, which will be, by the way, uh, New Year's Eve from Birmingham. I'll tell you what, Tim, I've, you're a tough guy, 10 years in the pros, but we'll find out how tough you are if you survive New Year's Eve with Paul Horning. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have my wife with me as, as protection. Well, that's smart. You were always smart. That's how you lasted. First and ten from the 13, Tennessee. <laughs> that's a good idea. Daryl Dickey, plenty of time again. Can't find anybody. Short hops it, incomplete. Intended for Jeff Powell. Clock down to 151. By the way, speaking of that All-American Bowl, that'll be Georgia Tech. Tech will be playing. You can watch that game tonight on many of these TNT stations. We'll be playing Georgia tonight in Atlanta. Tech, 7-2-1 uh, and one on the season, had an outstanding year, ranked fourth in the nation defensively with that black watch defense, and they'll get a chance to see if they can stop the nation's best rusher, Lorenzo White of Michigan State. Lorenzo White. Now, a lot of SEC fans will say, wait a minute, what do you mean best? Well, he has 1,908 yards, broke the Big Ten rushing record, broke the sophomore rushing record that had been set by Herschel Walker. And he's a great back. Second down 10 from the 13. Jeff Powell. Only a yard or so. Vanderbilt toughening up here on this stand as we're down to a 143 remaining in the first half. Florida still leading Florida State 14 to nothing. And Neil Anderson had two touchdowns in that game and has gone over 1,000 yards on the season now for... Florida, speaking of running backs, he's not bad. One double-A playoff scores coming up here. Georgia Southern leading Jackson State. Irk Russell, former Georgia defensive coordinator there at Georgia Southern. And his son coaches for Vanderbilt. Rusty, Rusty as a matter of fact. Third down, eight from the 11-yard line. Tennessee. Daryl Dickey screens it out here to Davis. Davis. Very little gain, if any. Jeff Holt with the stop. So Vanderbilt's defensive team toughening up down here on this drive by Tennessee. Tennessee will have fourth down and long yardage here. Let's see if they send in Reves for a field goal. They lead 24-0 with 51 seconds to go in the half. And the fans here want them to go for it. But Reves is going onto the field. And the clock is winding down. Already Tennessee laying back a little bit. And to be honest, I think they can afford to. Yeah. No question about it. Reves going into this game tied for the lead in the SEC scoring race with Bo Jackson. And uh, you know what I think? Uh, here's another thing I think. I don't think kickers and running backs and receivers should be in the same, competing in the same category. I think you should have a category for kickers and then a category for uh, players. Your category for kickers would be playing tuba, <laughs> however. No, I respect what they do. I just don't want my kid to be one. You do know? you really? Yeah, I really do. I, you know, I probably would melt. You know, you stand up, it'd be like Gary Premium kicking that, uh, kicking a one in the sixth quarter against Kansas City back in 71 uh, to end the longest game in NFL history. I don't know if I could have stood up over the ball. So I, I respect what they have to do. I just don't think they belong in the same category as someone that carries the ball 30 <laughs> times a game. You can run for office. That was a great explanation. The 29-yard field goal attempt by Reves is good, and that followed the delay of game penalty to move back and give Reves a less severe angle as it was on that far side hash mark, and it proved to be a wise decision. Reves has now kicked 23 field goals on the season and is the leading kicker in the Southeastern Conference. And I think he's an got an opportunity to be an All-American this year. He is a great field goal kicker, second in the nation in that department. The All-American Bowl we've been talking about, New Year's Eve from Birmingham with uh, yours truly Bob Neal, Tim Foley, and Paul Horning. Michigan State Spartans, they finished very strong. They went two and four and then won five in a row, did the Spartans. Won their last five games, clobbered Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin in the final game of the year. And they'll play the yeah, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. John Dewberry, the quarterback at Tech, He's right now not thinking about Michigan State. He's thinking about them Bulldogs. Yeah, Tim, there's a trivia question for you. What is that gold dome right here near the stadium? The world's largest yo-yo. The world's largest yo-yo. <laughs> no, that's correct. No, that's not it. You, that, that's you from, went a trip to the World's Fair. That was from the World's Fair. That was constructed for the World's Fair. Is that, that was correct? my hint. That no, was good. good. Thank <laughs> you. Skyline of Knoxville. America's team will just about. This is three weeks in a row that we've brought you the volunteers here on the Superstation, the Tennessee Volunteers and their road to the Sugar Bowl. 
and on any of those TNT stations you may be watching on today. Vanderbilt with the squib kickoff and out to the 22 yard line and that's better than they've done previously. Clay Parker with the ball only 10 seconds to go in the first half and it is Tennessee 27 Vanderbilt nothing. Now, I don't know if they were trying to do what they did but they did something that George Allen used to do back with the uh, with the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, they had a guy a kicker that would actually hello that would actually aim at one of the front men on a kickoff return hit him and then the ball would obviously bounce helter skelter and try to recover it. That was the way they did an onside kick. Carl Woods carrying the ball for Vanderbilt. That'll be the last play of this first half. Vanderbilt will be very happy for this half to come to an end. Tennessee 27 Vanderbilt nothing. You see two seconds remaining on the clock. The officials stopped it. And now the players have already gone to the locker room. Uh, they're not going to be able to have the play, no matter what they want. Two seconds to go. The official said the clock stopped so they can reset the time. They move the stick. Now they wind the clock. Now the two seconds goes down. We'll do this by the books. And Vanderbilt of Tennessee now go in to the locker room. Johnny Majors with a 27-point lead at halftime. We'll be back in just a moment. Built 27 to nothing at halftime and we said when we started this uh, Tim Foley it looked like Vanderbilt would be mismatched today and I ask you what Vanderbilt would have to do to stay in this ball game and one of the things you said would be to hang into the ball game and be like a heavyweight fight stay away from the big punch not get knocked out they may have got hit by a haymaker on the first play from the line of scrimmage when Gromos was pressured and had to uh, intentionally ground the ball and start from a hole and it went downhill from that very first play yeah that set the tone didn't it uh, they, they struggled back and uh, ripped off a 68-yard run to try to make a game of it, but uh, they're just outmatched here in, in Knoxville this afternoon. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this game. Uh, Tennessee came down very quickly uh, and scored on their first possession. This is a five-yard touchdown pass to Tim McGee from Daryl Dickey, and it was 7-0 Tennessee. Now, this is that 65-yard, exactly 65-yard run by Carl Woods, but he gets caught from behind coming off the left side of the screen is McDaniel. Number 86 comes in here and wham, gets Carl Woods from behind. Tennessee makes some big defensive plays there, and Vanderbilt can't do anything with it. Now, this is Daryl Dickey, who threw, that's his first half stati statistics, by the way, three TDs, 213 yards. Here comes 43 of the 213. This goes to Eric Swanson, number 27. Easy catch, and he dives into the end zone, and it's 17-0 early in the second quarter. Dickey's third touchdown pass. This one also to Swanson, breaking the tackle grasp of Jeff Holt, and it's 24 to nothing. Reves comes out and kicks a field goal a little bit later to make it 27 nothing, a 29 yarder, and that's what the halftime score is, 27 to nothing. And Daryl Dickey there making his reservations for the hotel room in uh, New Orleans. And there's Bob Woodruff, the retiring athletic director for Tennessee. They honored him at halftime here, and at halftime, Bob Woodruff directed the band in Rocky Top, and we've heard Rocky Top played a lot. I believe the Commodores probably heard Rocky Top played more than they'd like to today. I believe you're right. That's now, this is going to be my favorite question oh, all year long. Okay. Our final regular season telecast. What does Vanderbilt do now to get back in this one? Let's hear you answer this <laughs> one. No, no, I can't <laughs> answer that question. No. It's going to be tough. It, it, it really is going to be difficult. They're, you know, they're out of the game, and what they're trying to do now is they're just fighting for respectability. They're playing for pride. That's what you have to do now. You've got to play aggressively, swarm the football, and, and, and try to redeem yourself in a sense in the second half but they they're out of the football game I have another question of uh, interest I'm going to ask you now and let you answer as we get back underway in the second half okay. and that is Tennessee's headed to the Sugar Bowl they're going to play Miami down there a lot of people think Miami will clobber Tennessee I have a feeling you may disagree with that and we'll talk about it as we go into the second half as Tennessee's headed to the Sugar Bowl leading 27 to nothing stay with us we'll be right back this is Turner Network Television Vanderbilt 27 to nothing just prior to kickoff to start the second half and there are 97,372 fans here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville today and that is a new record of attendance as you probably know Neyland Stadium is the second largest stadium in America college football stadium with their 97,000 capacity actually the capacity officially is 91,000 plus so they can get as you can see 97,000 in here when they try and the only stadium larger is at University of Michigan. That may soon change because they are planning 
uh, enlargement of this stadium, believe that or not, and are going to upper deck the one open end zone that's open on the what would be the second level. And soon we'll have more than 100,000, and I doubt that they'll have problems filling it now with the Tennessee headed to the Sugar Bowl. They've never really had problems filling this stadium, even when it used to seat about 50,000 back in the 40s and 50s. So Vanderbilt will kick off to add insult to injury. Vanderbilt kicks off to Tennessee as Tennessee won the toss at the beginning of the game and declined to exercise their option in the first half and gets to receive the ball here in the second. You may get to see a lot of Tennessee players in this second half. And Tim, as we wait for this kickoff, I ask you, as you look at the statistics there, uh, ask you about only 30 yards passing for Vanderbilt. Ask you about Tennessee and Miami in the Sugar Bowl. Miami with Vinny Testaverde, a great quarterback. I think that, uh, let's get the kickoff here. All right. Coming out of the end zone is Jeff Powell to the 24-yard line. Out near the 25-yard line, and there Tennessee will set up their offense. And here are the statistics on the first half possessions. As you can see, Tennessee got a touchdown, a field goal, a touchdown, punted the ball, then a touchdown and another field goal. They had great field position, and also, of course, there were turnovers, an interception and a fumble recovery, and that led to two of those scores for the University of Tennessee. And here comes Daryl Dickey. He's thrown for 213 yards in the first half and three touchdown passes. He now has nine touchdown passes, only one interception since coming into the second half of the Alabama game, and what a great season. Doug Dickey is finishing his senior career with. Here's Tim McGee. Sixth catch of the day. Out to the 30-yard line. Gain of five-yard. Kermit Sykes with the tackle. I think Daryl Dickey now has gone. It was 99 coming in. 114 passes without an interception. That's really remarkable. That's like almost pitching a shutout. Or I mean a no-hitter. Or a shutout. Or a shutout. <laughs> I think Tennessee matches up well with the University of Miami. They've got some great athletes. I don't think they'd match up as well with Oklahoma or Nebraska because they're a running football team. But against the pass-oriented Miami Hurricanes, I think they'll do very well. Second down five from the 30. Here comes big old Sam Henderson for the first down to the 43-yard line. And Tennessee's offensive line blowing Vanderbilt off the ball here. number 68 Bruce Wilkerson nice job of trapping inside Williams and Kirk and Galbraith very very consistent job on a Saturday afternoon by Saturday afternoon basis spotted at the 41 yard line first down Tennessee leading 27 and up beautiful sunshiny afternoon here in Knoxville Tennessee about 60 degrees no gain on the play David Worm stopping Sam Henderson Worm number 97 the defensive right tackle for the Vanderbilt Commodores and the Commodores have suffered through a season they had just as soon forget. Today they will fall if they cannot come back here to a record of 3-7-1. And, and, of course, there are all kinds of rumors in the press about George McIntyre. Will he resign or be fired as head coach at Vanderbilt? And George has not said definitely one way or another, but Tim uh, wouldn't be surprised if George McIntyre was not back next year at Vanderbilt. No, I don't think that that would, that would be a major surprise to anyone. And it's... Close to the first down, it's complete to Jeff Smith. Mark Whaler with the stop. Vanderbilt's a tough job, Bob. It's a, you know, I'm not sure that they can find someone, if, if George is not back, I don't think they can find someone better than him to come in. Uh, they, they play by a different set of rules in the sense that... Uh, uh, you Self-imposed, in a sense. Yeah, correct. You have to be... A, you have to be a well-above-average student to even qualify to get in. And then, because of the structure of their academics... Uh, you're hit with some pretty tough classes right away. And uh, it's, it's just difficult to compete against schools like Alabama, Tennessee, and Georgia, given those restrictions. On a third down and one, Sam Henderson dives across to about the 48-yard line for the first down for Tennessee. Well, there's been a lot of coaching changes, as we mentioned that. They'll move the sticks forward here, I believe. Yes, they do. It is a first down. Uh, Mississippi State fired Emory Ballard, and people are wondering who the replacement will there be. Uh, names mentioned Bobby Collins, Bill Dooley uh, are possible, so there's nothing certainly official on that at all. Lou Holtz, the new coach at Notre Dame, and here's a long one complete to Clint Scales. Oh, my. Down to the five-yard line. That was a, about a 43-yard pass completion. Dickey 
to Clink Scales, who's the deep threat for Tennessee, and now everybody's in the act. It was McGee and Swanson in the first half, and now enter number 87, Clink Scales. You see, he gets the ball up early, and he gets it up high. Gives Clink Scale the ability with that great speed to run under the football and adjust to it. And the uh, beautiful throw by Dickey and great concentration by Clink Scale. Not an easy catch to make coming over the top like that. First and goal just outside the five yard line. Sam Henderson nailed by number 90, Steve Wade. Vanderbilt's all conference defensive tackle. Penalty marker is on the field. As they look at that penalty, we're talking about all the coaching changes. Of course, Faust out and Holtz in at Notre Dame. Texas El Paso fired Bill Young, the holding call against Tennessee. Memphis State fired Ray Dempsey. Oj Fazio is gone from Pittsburgh. A lot of people are wondering what will happen at Clemson with Danny Ford. Nothing official about that, but that's a big rumor. The only good news <laughs> in all of that is that we just understand that Florida extended Galen Hall's contract through 1990. Congratulations to a fine man and a deserving coach. And then speaking of deserving coaches. Johnny Majors and, uh, you know, his name's in the rumor mill also. Back Bob at Pitt, maybe. Back at Pitt. And obviously, he was very successful there and. When you talk about who you'd like to bring in, you have fond memories of the things that Majors was able to accomplish, and he has talked to them. Illegal use of hands, five-yard penalty, offense, repeat first down. Frankly, I'd be surprised at that. Of course, Majors is from here, played at Tennessee, and has come back here and is, of course, on his way to the Sugar Bowl now and has really developed a program. This Tennessee team's going to be good next year and next year and next year. They've got some great young players. Over the middle, the ball popped loose as they were scrambling for it, and the officials say it was never in anybody's possession, so it will be an incomplete pass. There's David Keith, the actor. Uh, he's so there's David Keith, the actor. Yes. <laughs> he's, a, he's not he's happy. Intense. Yeah, right. He's, he grew up in Knoxville. He goes to a lot of volunteer games. Tim McGee is slow to get up on that play, by the way. Let's hope that that young man is okay. He is the big play wide receiver who's broken all the passing records here at Tennessee. The way, it, hopefully, it's uh, something minor, but we can't tell. Looks like they're working on his right ankle, Tim. He's been relatively injury free and looks to be okay. He's taken a lot of knocks today. And he's also caught a lot of balls. He has six catches. Now you talk about traffic. Look at this. And, per, uh, and pass interference, in my view. Jeff Holt looked like he came over the back before the ball got there. The center of a lot of attention. Most receivers don't like that area of the field, uh, that short slant, especially down in there close, because there is so much traffic, and that's why Tennessee today has worked more to the outside when they get close to the goal line. Second down goal from the 10 now. The original line of scrimmage was just outside the five-yard line. Dickey, no pressure on him. So he's just going to run it. And he gets seven, loses the ball. And do you believe that? It squirted loose, and I believe Tennessee fell on it again. Let's wait for the call, though. There was a battle for the ball down there. I think David Douglas, 78, fell on it. They're saying they blew the play dead. The whistle had sounded before the ball came loose. They've already spotted it back here at the seven-yard line. Let's see it again. This is Dickey. No pressure, so he decided to just run it up the middle. I was talking to Walt Harris about Dickey, and, of course, he had great things to say that he was down. Good call. Yeah, good, good call here. And uh, Clink Sales working to get open. He really, I think, was, you know, now Clink Scales really goes to work. I think he was looking for Jeff Smith on it, running an outside pattern. But uh, I'll get back to my Daryl Dickey story in a second. Third and goal from the seven-yard line. Dickey with an audible down here. Tennessee leading 27 to nothing. Here's Dickey under some pressure again. Just throws it openly into the end zone. No flag on it. There was a receiver close enough. Clink Scales was, was in about 10 yards of that pass, I think. Good pressure on Dickey from Vanderbilt. Clink Scales just running what they call a fade pattern, trying to drift away from the uh, defender to the outside, heading toward the end zone. Dickey didn't like what he saw there, and as a result, just threw the ball away. By this time, the ball is in the air, falling harmlessly in the end zone. But uh, Walt Harris was talking about Dickey scrambling, and he had a problem putting the ball away. And he tried to encourage him to put the ball away, and that wasn't working real well. So now if, 
If he fumbles the ball, he has to run 10 stadium steps. Let's see if we'll see next week if Walt makes Darrell do some running. And Carlos Reves just now has scored with that field goal 102 points, and it's a new kick scoring record here at Tennessee. Tennessee 30, Vanderbilt nothing. And the Commodores have heard this theme song, Rocky Top, as much as they'd like to today. I always thought uh, they had a name, the defense contest here in Knoxville. And one of the suggested names were the Rocky Stops, and I felt that'd be a good one. But they finally officially named them the, the Orange Crunch. I guess you see why. You can hear that crunch up here. Clay Parker goes down hard at the 16-yard line. And Tennessee on their way to the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> Thanks, Ray Perkins. You are a sweetie. And, of course, I believe they're referring to the 14-14 Alabama-LSU tie with a minute, around a minute and a half left when Ray Perkins decided to go for the tie instead of the win against LSU thinking in the back of his mind that with Tennessee had at the time three games left Ole Miss Kentucky and Vanderbilt thinking that Tennessee would stumble somewhere and the balls have not stumbled today they've been like citation they've ran so well Romo first and ten from the 16th it's incomplete intended for Jim Pop who's dropped another one we're going to pause five seconds for station identification Bob Neal, Tim Foley with you from Neyland Stadium, Knoxville, Tennessee, 30, Vanderbilt, nothing, 10, 28 to go, third quarter. Vanderbilt, second down, 10 from the 16-yard line. Romos has thrown for only 30 yards today. Remember, he's passing against the league-leading team against the pass, Tennessee. Has a man open here. Great catch by six, Gerald Mitchell. It's a first down out to the 34-yard line. Gerald Mitchell, a true freshman from Valdosta, Georgia. He has also made a lot of progress as you talk about the Vanderbilt receivers. Boo Mitchell, real tough kid, good receiver, good blocker, and fine hands. Good that, catch, Boo. It sure was a good catch. A lot of freshmen on this Vanderbilt team, true freshmen and otherwise, on first down 10, Vanderbilt from the 34-yard line now. That's Parker in motion. They give to Carl Woods. Tries to find something up the middle. Spins his way across the 40 to the 41-yard line. You know, some teams are rated high against the pass because folks just can run on them a lot, you know? And so it's not that they, they haven't had a lot of attempts against them through the air. Tennessee is not that way. I think what they do best is disguise their pass coverage. They don't give the quarterback any hint of what the coverage is going to be. They make the quarterback work as he's dropping back to read the coverage, and then they get real good pressure, and they blitz effectively. Second down for Vanderbilt from the 40. Romos. As it popped into the air, incomplete. Hit by 54, Dale Jones. We saw Jones intercept the ball about that distance away from Mike Shula in the Tennessee-Alabama game. He seems to always be where he needs to be. Dale Jones. With the pass breakup, Vandy without a huddle. Third down four, Gromos. It's complete for the first down out to the 48-yard line. Gromos goes down after he completes the pass to 12, Carl Parker, who is tackled by 39, Tim Welch. And let's look at Dale Jones when he broke this play up. This is two plays ago. Got a game going on, working against Daryl Holt. He gets rid of him and gets up in the air, knocks the ball out. And... Uh, that, that, all that takes is good football sense. You've got to be aware of what's going on. Some people just bury their helmet into an offensive lineman and continue to work and work and work. They're not, they're not, they're oblivious to everything going on around them. Romos facing a four-man rush. It's incomplete. Threw it into heavy traffic intended for Parker. Darren Miller was closer to receiving the ball than Parker was, I think, that time. It'll be second down 10. The ball out near midfield. And there's George McIntyre. I'll tell you what, in terms of... Uh, a human being and a good person. He's the kind that every father would want his son to play for, that's for sure. He has his son playing for him here, Mike McIntyre, who plays in the backfield and re defensive backfield and returns punts. And Johnny Majors, in my opinion, should be SEC Coach of the Year. 
I think that'll be uncontested this year. John Majors has done a wonderful job at Tennessee under tough circumstances. On second down, 10, Dromos. Pressure on, he's open. It's complete to number eight, Tony Piercy, the freshman on the right side, the flanker. He's a freshman from Bradenton, Florida, a walk-on at Vanderbilt. Kramer with the stop for Tennessee. They talk about aggressiveness in football, Bob, but you want to be aggressive, and, and, and but you want to be intelligently aggressive. You don't want to do dumb things just because they're aggressive. And, and it's the same thing when you're blitzing on defense. You don't want to just blitz. You want to be working against a specific blocking pattern where you feel you've got a good opportunity of breaking it down. And that's what Tennessee does so well. Third down, long three, Vanderbilt at the 45 of Tennessee. Grummel. Just missed his receiver. He had his man open. Tony Piercy was open coming across the middle, and it was thrown behind him. Vanderbilt does not convert, but trailing 30 to nothing, we might see them go for it anyway. Let's see what Vanderbilt decides to do here. Not much point in giving the ball back to Tennessee. <laughs> and I think they are going to go for it on fourth down. It'll be fourth down four from the 45-yard line. By the way, we might mention Tim McGee, who's coming. Tim McGee, uh, who came off the field earlier for Tennessee, their wide receiver. He is not seriously injured, just a bruise to his lower left leg. Four defensive backs, Bob. Here they come. Gromos missed his target again. Open momentarily was Carl Parker, but Gromos couldn't get him the ball. He was under a lot of pressure and went down as he threw the ball. And Vanderbilt fails to convert, trailing 30 to nothing. 8.08 to go. Third quarter. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Tennessee leading 30 to nothing as Smokey the Blue Tick Hound is enjoying himself this afternoon. He keeps his poise no matter what the game is. We just heard over the PA system that Florida is leading Florida State 28 to nothing in Gainesville at halftime. Tennessee, Darrell Dick has his man wide open. And down to the 43-yard line goes Joey Klinkscales, Kermit Sykes, with the tackle. First down, University of Tennessee. Yeah, right. I wonder if Ron's ever been in acting school. He's very demonstrative. He, he's very good, you know. Is he team behind? No, you know, he, that's just how he is. He's intense, and <laughs> if a coach is like that, it doesn't matter if it's 30 to nothing or what. And... Uh, you know, he wants some more interceptions. This, this defense is leading the nation in turnovers. He's trying to get them fired up and keep them wound up. He has never seen an offensive play <laughs> live during a game. <laughs> Here comes Jeff Powell, the sprinter. Get three or four yards around the right side, down to the 42, hit by Chris Gaines, who's playing with that sore left arm, his broken bone in his left wrist, and Gaines has eight tackles on the day. What a courageous afternoon for that middle linebacker for Vanderbilt. There he is, 34. Sprained ankle back in training camp. Now he's got a broken left wrist. He missed a couple of games due to uh, infection in his uh, respiratory system. Had real trouble breathing and getting enough oxygen. Uh, was in the hospital, but he's come back here to play his heart out for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Second down six, Tennessee at the 39 of Vanderbilt. Dickey goes down, and it's number 989, John Wyndham, who came around behind to get him. That's his second sack of the day. John Wyndham's dad's a coach, of course. He's senior from Brentwood, Tennessee. And Dickey, whose dad was a coach here at Tennessee and is now the new athletic director. Wyndham's one of those overachiever types. And, uh, but Steve Wade is a legitimate prospect that defensive lineman for uh, Vanderbilt has started every game that he's ever been at Vanderbilt for just a real producer big big heart third down 12 it is complete to Wilson and Wilson wrestles for the ball with Chris Gaines and just gets three or four yards far short of the first down on the third down and Tennessee will probably have to give this up, but that Chris Gaines, you wouldn't think it was 30 to nothing the way he's playing. He always plays with pride and enthusiasm and uh, drops back, waiting for things to develop, hanging in his zone, dodges a blocker. Now he's coming up there, breaks down, breaks down, doesn't want to overcommit, and grabs hold of the football, trying to get it back to the offense. 
And Garmin's into punt. Line of scrimmage at the 41 yard line of Vanderbilt. Mike McIntyre, Coach George McIntyre's son, is back to take the punt. He's going to let it bounce, hoping it goes into the end zone. And it does. It'll be a touchback and brought out to the 20 yard line. There'll be a penalty there for trying to bat the ball back in. And we'll pick up on that penalty for you. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. And we'll be right back. Tim McGee, 121 career receptions. He just broke the all-time receiving rece re reception record for career at Tennessee of Larry Sievers with 121 now. It was 117. He's tied for the Tennessee record in career pass reception for touchdowns at seven with Austin Dennis. Romo on first down has his man open. It is complete for a big first down gain out to the 41-yard line to Tony Piercy, number eight, Andre Kramer with the tackle. Florida just handing it to Florida State, 28 to nothing. Florida State ranked 11th in the UPI poll on their way to the Gator Bowl. Florida, for Florida, this is their bowl game. <laughs> and one double-A playoffs, Rhode Island leading at halftime. First down, Vanderbilt out to the 49-yard line goes Carl Woods. And Carl Woods has got way over 100 yards now. That'll give him about 120 or so for Carl Woods on the, uh, on the afternoon. George Southern, 17 nothing at halftime over Jackson State, one double-A playoffs. So Florida really handing it to Florida State down in Gainesville today. That's a little bit surprising. That's a surprise to me. I knew it would be a good, I thought it would be a good football game. It's amazing what the first few series can sometimes do to the outcome of a game. If, you, if, if momentum is wrestled away from you and you're not able to recapture, you can just find yourself rolling down a steep hill. Second down two from the 48-yard line. Vanderbilt trying to run for it. Nothing going this time. Carl Woods is stopped. Kelly Ziegler with the tackle, number 49 for Tennessee. We've talked a lot about Dale Jones and how great a year he's had at outside linebacker for Tennessee, and as, there's no question that's happened. But so have Miller and Ziegler on the inside. They've been very good. No huddle, third down two, Gromo under pressure as always. And it is complete, breaking the tackle is Piercy. And he goes to the 33-yard line. Terry Brown with the stop, and Vanderbilt trying to drive here. They, they've been successful, that's a 20-yard gain. They, Vanderbilt's been successful every time they've huddled up, Tim, without, uh, or have gone back to the line of scrimmage minus the huddle. They seem to have gained a little bit more yardage than usually. Well, what they do is they get they get Tennessee out of their stride, out of their rhythm. They don't give Tennessee an opportunity to do a lot of disguising and, and give them those different looks and go on the quick count. And Piercy's been a real pleasant surprise for the Commodores, a walk-on freshman. He's going to be a fine player for them over the next three years. The 97,000 Tennessee fans are hoping for a shutout here. Tennessee leading 30 to nothing, but Vandy driving, 329 to go third quarter. Ramos. Just racked by number 40, Lavoisier Fisher, as he released the ball. He was looking for Parker, but he barely had a chance. On your mark, get set. Mm. Oh. And Gromos has taken a lot of that this year. Uh, he was uh, missed a game with uh, injury to his sternum from getting hit in a similar play like that right in the middle of the chest. That's right. He got hurt against Georgia, missed the second half of the Georgia game, and then missed uh, the Mississippi, Mississippi game. Second down 10, Vanderbilt at the 32-yard line of Tennessee. And again, he's hit again as he throws, and it just is far overthrown, intended for Tom Fitz, number 46. And this time, Chris White came right up the middle and decked him. It's either Chris White or Dale Jones or Hovannik or Fisher or somebody almost every play. Tennessee's got an outstanding secondary with Brown and Davis, White, Kramer, McDaniel, Sims. It goes on and on. Now, as, as Gromus gets older and, you know, goes through his sophomore and junior year, if that happens to him a couple times in a row and he's a senior, he'll start smacking some people in the head and say, let's get going here. But as a freshman, I, I, you, you just, it's hard to be real assertive. Third down, 10 at the 32. Two straight incompletions for Gromus. Here they come again. 
And he overthrows his receivers, probably wisely so. Gerald Mitchell, number six, was down there, but the receivers were very tightly covered in the defensive secondary. Andre Kramer was back there covering. There wasn't really anybody to catch the ball. Had it been thrown there, could have been intercepted by Tennessee. So it'll be fourth and ten, and Vanderbilt will go for it again. Against a blitz, the offensive linemen have assignments by man. Like the left guard might have the first man to the left of the ball, the tackle the second man to the left of the ball, the back it would be checking the linebacker before he blitzed, and the, when the safety comes, often he's not in the count. And that's one that the wide receiver has to read. If the wide receiver sees the safety coming, he'll break the pattern off, and the quarterback's got to see it coming because they're blitzing more people than they can protect. Old George McIntyre standing on George's left, your TV right, in the black sweater. That's Bob Stanley. He's the offensive line coach. He went to school at Texas. He was bemoaning their fate this morning. It's Texas A&M really hammered them. Another thing he talked about was Will Walford. He's coached eight offensive linemen that are now in the pros, and he thinks Will Walford, number 69 for Vanderbilt, is as good as any player he has ever coached. A great natural athlete. And he's 6'6", 280, Will Walford is. They call him the tractor because McIntyre said he played like one. And we have seen Walford have an outstanding year. He made the all-conference team for Vanderbilt. He and Wade were the only two Vanderbilt players selected on the United Press International all-conference team. There will be other all-conference teams, of course, including Niels and Foley's. <laughs> we could name one for you right away. Fourth down, 10. Vanderbilt going for it. Now this crowd on their feet, hoping the volunteers can stop them on the fourth down. Tennessee playing coverage. Nobody anywhere near a ball. Just fell harmlessly to the turf, and somebody didn't run a pattern or was held up by defensive play, one or the other. We'll be right back. This is Turner Network Television. Johnny Majors on his way to the Sugar Bowl. He's really rebuilt the team since coming here in 1977. Of course, he had a great career as a player here at the University of Tennessee. Back in 1956, as you see, he was runner-up to Paul Horning for the Heisman Trophy that year. He scored on a 25-yard run as UT beat the Commodores 27-7, 56. Johnny Majors, most people thought he should have won the Heisman Trophy, being a friend of Paul Horning and Johnny Majors. I will not vote on it. <laughs> But Majors had a great career, and of course now he's proven himself as a head football coach at Iowa State, then at Pitt, and now here at his alma mater, the University of Tennessee. Of course, Pitt won the Sugar Bowl, defeating Georgia back in 76 to win the national championship. Close to the first down goes William Howard out of the backfield, taking the swing pass, and they'll, they may have to measure that one. There are the championship years for the Volunteers. We told you earlier in 1938 when they first won it, Bob Woodruff, the retiring athletic director, played on that team. There's the 56 year where the Volunteers were 6-0 and when Johnny Majors played so well. And in 69, last time they won, Doug Dickey was the head coach here at Tennessee. Jack Hacksaw Reynolds was the defensive star, and they had a great defensive unit in 69 also. Won the SEC championship. It is a first down, Tennessee. And most championship teams... Uh, are comprised of a very, very strong defense. And sometimes they're matched with a with an exceptional offense, and sometimes the offense is just the type of offense that'll put enough on the board. There's Carlos Raves, Tennessee's kicker, who has just broken the seasonal kick scoring record at Tennessee. He has 102 points scored this year. The record, 101, was set by his brother, Fuad, playing for Miami's Dolphins now. First and 10 from the 43, Tennessee. Keith Davis. Out near midfield, tackled by Chris Gaines, who's had 10 tackles for Vanderbilt today, the middle linebacker. You want to talk about the outhouse and the penthouse with statistics here today. Daryl Dickey, nearly 300 yards, and John Gromos, 102, one interception, no TDs. But John Gromos, in fairness to him, has been on his back about as much as he's been erect today. Yeah, that's like blaming the jockey because the horse can't run. You know, I mean, that, <laughs> I, I don't think that's really fair. I think you're right. <laughs> Second down four from the 49. 
Incomplete. He tried to get it outside on the left side to Joy Klinkscales. He really took a hit by Kermit Sykes over there. These Tennessee receivers, McGee, Klinkscales, and Swanson, give you all three of the necessary ingredients in a passing game. McGee with the great moves and the big plays, Clink Scales with the deep speed, and Eric Swanson with the good hands. He's also a good blocker, and if they don't have enough speed there, they can bring in Sam Grady, the Olympic caliber sprinter, and on it goes for Johnny Majors and all the receivers he's developed over the years. Starting back at Iowa State, it's Gordon Jones at Pitt, Otto Stowe at Iowa State. Third down four, volunteers from the 49. Leading 30 to nothing, 2.17 to go third quarter. Dickey. That's popped into the air by number 90, Steve Wade, and 89 Wyndham went after it. Quick set here. An exceptional job by Wade. Gets the arm over, sneaks on past, and sticks his arm up in the air to bat the ball down. Offensively, you try to shoot out and knock the uh, defensive lineman's legs out from under him, or at least occupy his hands low. But Wade's been around long enough to di diagnose what was happening and bat that ball out of the air. Garmin. Getting away a wobbled punt. Mike McIntyre gets it. And returns it a couple of yards to the 21-yard line. And there, Vanderbilt will take over the football once again, trailing 30 to nothing with two minutes to go in the third quarter. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. 21, Jeff Powell, transfer from William & Mary. One year with the Vols and what a job he's done in a support role from the tailback position for Tennessee. Yep. The Superdome's going to be a long way from William and Mary, huh? <laughs> Little did he believe, I'm sure, when he first came here that he'd be playing in the Sugar Bowl. Intended for Parker, broken up by Tennessee once again. I think it was Ziegler who came across and got it. And there's Johnny Majors. You rarely see a head coach coaching up front right here during a game. Let's see if we can listen in on it. We're not getting anything done. I told Coach Harris, I'm I don't know if we could hear that or not. Second down 10. Maybe they read the lips, huh? Johnny, if you're that good a coach, hand signals get it done. Ball at the 21-yard line. Tennis, Vanderbilt ball, second down 10. Piercy takes a vicious hit by Welch as he had to go up for it. Penalty marker is down in the Vanderbilt backfield. As you see, Gromos getting up. He's going to need some time in the whirlpool. He'll be bruised. We saw Bill Ramsdell get this same kind of treatment last week uh, by the Tennessee defensive line. Pow. Holt looked like he was trying to pick off the on-rushing lineman at uh, Bennett, and he might have hit Gromos, too. Richard Cooper was in there. Minute 51 to go in the third quarter as the officials discuss the penalty situation. It's against Vanderbilt, probably holding. Back to just outside the 10-yard line. Here's Dick Burleson. Holding, 10-yard penalty against the offense. Repeat the down. Well, Vanderbilt's team, with all these youngsters, has to look ahead to the 1986 season. They're going to finish 3-7-1 in 1985. No excuse making here because uh, everybody gets injuries. I mean, Tennessee lost Tony Robinson, but Vanderbilt has been racked by injuries all year long. Second down 20. Mark Ratcher, who's the starting quarterback, is out. Romo's replaced him. The shovel pass is fumbled, and it's just an incomplete pass. As of course, uh, John Romo's knew that. He tried to get it to Woods. He didn't hold it. The crowd doesn't understand that that pitch, if you pitch it only a couple of inches forward, it's a pass and thus incomplete. There's the difference in the rushing yardage. Woods of Vandy has great yardage. Tennessee hasn't rushed because they haven't had to, folks, frankly. Here comes the shovel pass, and it's used as is a draw or a screen. Nobody home that time. Defensively, Tennessee is very well prepared as you look at Daryl Dickey. Bumpus uh, works, Dick Bumpus works the inside linebacker, Zook the defensive back, Mel Foles defensive end. First, Ken Donahue, defensive line. 
Carl Woods, all he's doing is getting a little running room there, a little room for the punter to come in and get that ball somewhere out of the end zone. Minute 37 to go, third quarter. Vanderbilt stalled again. And every year in Birmingham, they name the assistant coach of the year. They call it the working coach of the year. And, uh, I think probably the two lead candidates for that this year would be Ken Donahue at Tennessee for the job he's done here with the defense and Mike Archer in, in, uh, at LSU. Because LSU has uh, statistically just had an exceptional year. Leads the SEC in points allowed. Done real well. 49 is Alan Herline, the junior punter from Atlanta. Also the placement kicker for Vanderbilt. Andre Kramer, number one, the punt receiver for Tennessee. Penalty markers go down. I believe there will be a delay of the game. So the five-yard run by Woods to get a little more punting room goes for naught as Vanderbilt took a little too long. We're talking about the injuries. They said Ratcher went down at quarterback for Vanderbilt, and Gromos and Richardson have come into play there. And today, the leading receiver in the SEC and the A-back for Vanderbilt is not playing, Everett Crawford. He injured his knee. The good news is he won't have to have surgery, but Crawford was game. not able to play today. Offense, dead ball foul. Fifth down. And Carl Woods' brother is a redshirt freshman for Tom, Tennessee. Thomas Woods, yeah. TD, they call him, I think. Understandably so. He'll be playing for the Volunteers next year. Erline gets away a beauty. Kramer takes it at the 42. That is hauled down right there. The tackle was made by 52 Jay Fishesher. Tennessee and Georgia Tech tied 6-6 in a real great defensive football game. And Georgia Tech, with the fourth-ranked defense in the nation, will take on the Michigan State Spartans to see if they can stop the nation's leading rusher, Lorenzo White. Dave Yarima, Michigan State's quarterback, injured in the middle of the season, is back and playing very well for the Spartans. They are an exceptional offensive football team. You know they've got to be good. They snuck by the Boilers. You know they <laughs> must be good. <laughs> that was one of the five games in a row Michigan State won. And Tech, you can see tonight on some of these TNT stations as Tech takes on Georgia. Lindsey Nelson, Paul Horner will bring you that ball game tonight at 8.15 Eastern time. As Keith Davis to the 46-yard line. Yeah, McGee can do more than catch the ball, Tim. This is something that you don't see a lot of wide receivers do. Whoops. Well, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> can you make contact below the waist like that? <laughs> not that far away from the line of scrimmage. It's very close, as a matter of fact. That's okay. Timmy can catch it when they throw it to him. We're Tennessee bound for sugar. The Volunteers on their way to New Orleans, leading 30 to nothing, and Daryl Dickey comes over to the sideline as the third quarter ends to a big round of applause to the Tennessee fans. 15 minutes of football remaining in the season for Vanderbilt, and 15 minutes until the Sugar Bowl for Tennessee. You see the University of Tennessee campus in the background and the blue skies and the white puffy clouds here as the weather cleared up beautifully for this Volunteer game today. Second down three from the 46-yard line. And Jim Miller gets the first down for Tennessee Volunteers. Some scores now. Florida has given up a couple of touchdowns, and Florida State has closed the gap in the third quarter. That explosive Seminole offense, that game's certainly far from over, even though Florida had taken a 28-0 lead. Akron, Rhode Island tied. 1AA playoffs. Georgia Southern, third quarter leaders over Jackson State, 20-0. And in college basketball at the half, Tech leading Michigan. 25 to 17, the number two and three teams in the nation, or one and two, depending on the poll you're looking at. First down 10 from the 43-yard line. Tennessee continuing to drive. They lead 30 to nothing. Keith Davis, Don Anderson with the tackle. Today's game is brought to you in part by Buick and your Buick dealers for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality. It's today's Buick. A 17-yard gain for Keith Davis to the 26-yard line of Vanderbilt. Here's another attribute this young man has. Hole opens up wide, but Gaines steps up, closes it off, and Davis has the vision and the foot quickness to take it directly to the outside, rip off a nice gain. First down 10 at the 26-yard line. Volunteers. Yeah. 
Keith Davis carrying again. He gets to the 23-yard line. And, Tim, I uh, wonder if we're going to see Jeff Francis in here shortly, the freshman backup yeah, quarterback. I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, we did the Mississippi game. They inserted him early in the game, seemed to want to get him some action to see what it felt like to be under pressure. And uh, we really haven't seen much of him since then. So I'm at the end of that game, but I thought we'd see a little bit more of him against Kentucky than we did, and I thought for sure he'd be in the game by now against uh, with the score of 30 to nothing. Dickey has thrown for 295 yards, 22 out of 31, three touchdowns. What a day Daryl Dickey has had. Second down from the 24-yard line of Vanderbilt. Dickey pitching to Keith Davis. Has some good blocking out there. Penalty markers go down. Davis gets to the 18-yard line. And they're there in the center of the picture with the tall fellow with the kind of curly blonde hair is Jeff Francis. The backup quarterback, he's a freshman from Mount Prospect, Illinois, that Walt Harris, formerly an Illinois coach, found up in that Chicago area. And in the headphones is the uh, linebacker coach for Tennessee, Dick Bumpus. Right there. Play, played at Arkansas. And Played with Memphis in the USFL. Yeah, they're spotting that ball back at the 36-yard line. Here's the signal from Dick Burleson, the referee. Locking below the waist. Offense. Repeat the down. Ball tossed back to Davis. Here comes Jim Miller to the outside. And there comes the block right at the top of your picture. Really couldn't see it there. It was on number four, Kermit Sykes. College, uh, the NCAA and the College Rules Committee trying to do whatever they can to eliminate the knee injuries, uh, keeping that impact up a little bit higher. Second down 19 from the 35 now for Tennessee. On the draw play, Keith Davis. He had nowhere to go and still got 10 plus yards. To the 23-yard line goes Davis. We have to be impressed with this young man as we look at it from ground level. Watch that hole opening up. Now in college football, you can do what they're doing as far as pushing men out of the way. That's legal. Todd Kirk getting a good block. And Keith Davis, just tremendous balance. Highly recruited by Vanderbilt also in a real interstate recruiting battle. He grew up in the shadows of Vanderbilt University but elected to attend Tennessee. Third down seven, the 23-yard line. Single setback in there for Tennessee as Dickey wants to throw the ball under some pressure, and it's caught by McGee. But he had to come back too far for it. Won't be much of a gain on the play, if any, for McGee, his seventh catch of the day. Gains with some good pressure on John Gromos. Tim McGee, he is not only an outstanding receiver, but we've really enjoyed uh, working with him all the way back before the season and during our coverage of Tennessee games. <laughs> He's a delightful young man, a lot of fun, has his head on right. As right you yeah, he say. doesn't like it when I, his mother wants to know. I, we have some active mothers on this Tennessee team. That's all I got to tell you. She, she doesn't like it. I call him Timmy. When I was 33 years old in the NFL, Howard Cosell was calling me Timmy. Whoops. 37 yarder. They're going to fake what, it. See what kind of arm he's got. It was picked off. The man who threw the ball is Randy Sanders, a freshman backup quarterback who holds for the point afters. It was picked off by Noel Wells, and they're going to say that's at the six-yard line, even though he was driven into the end zone, and there it'll be Vanderbilt ball. Well, that was a strange set of circumstances. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. There's Tony Robinson in the red, white, and blue jacket. Tennessee's quarterback who was injured against Alabama. He was leading this team to a 3-1-1 record, including an upset over Auburn at the time. Everybody thought Tennessee would fold up their tents and go away at that time, but Tennessee has hung right in there, and now the fat lady is singing. I've never met the fat lady, Tim. But I understand she's a great singer. First down 10 from the six-yard line. He's at a lot of ball games, I'll tell you that. Here comes Weatherspoon out to the 11 yard line. Number 33, Kenny Weatherspoon, the junior from Nashville, backs up Carl Woods at the running back position. 10.54 to go in this football game. Tennessee 30, Vanderbilt nothing. I thought Tony Robinson might have been a Heisman Trophy candidate at the time he was injured. Now everybody asking whether Bo Jackson will win it, Chuck Long will win it, Lorenzo White, the sophomore at Michigan State. But that man could have won it had he not been injured. 
I think that uh, one of the things you have to consider there too is with the success of his football team that certainly adds to to uh, to your aura as a player. Here comes Weatherspoon again has some running room gets the Vanderbilt first down to the 23 yard line goes Weatherspoon. As the question is not only is is this a good player but it's also what does he do for his team how important is he to his football team I think that that's part of part of the value of, of any specific player. And that's what's so amazing about Paul Horning coming away with the Heisman Trophy because uh, he, he did it on a team that wasn't a real good football team so he had to be an exceptional athlete to display his ability. First down 10 from the 22 yard line Vanderbilt. Ten minutes to go in the ball game. Ramos wants to go to the air. It's complete to Parker. Another first down for Vanderbilt out to the 34-yard line. This time goes Carl Parker playing in place of the injured Everett Crawford, the SEC's leading receiver in terms of numbers of catches. Everett Crawford hurt his knee and will be out for the rest of the season. We did understand on Crawford that he will not have knee surgery, though. That's good news. We saw Everett Crawford have a great game when Vanderbilt beat Tennessee a few weeks ago on one of our TBS sports telecasts of Southeastern Conference football. First down 10, Vanderbilt again. Still scoreless, 30 to nothing. Vanderbilt's had opportunities, but not capitalized on them in terms of getting something on the board. Out to the 39-yard line comes Kenny Weatherspoon. I'd like to thank our spotter, Kim Anderson, for the great job he's done all year long, and Alex Vergara with our statistics. Nikki Nichols managing the booth and the great TBS sports crew. We're very proud of the video coverage we bring you of the football games and all the great pictures that our crew brings you under the direction of producer Skip Ellison. We'd also like to wish a happy Thanksgiving to all our viewers out there. It's belated. And, uh, hope you didn't eat too much. Hope you're still comfortable. Second down, six from the 38, Romos. His receiver fell down but caught the ball. It'll be a first down. That was Al Rogers at the 49-yard line. The sophomore from Nashville plays very little. A 13-yard reception by Al Rogers. Zone defense by Tennessee. Chris White, look at him. Oh, man, oh, man. Good throw, John. Chris White was ready to hawk that ball. You could just see him baiting Gromos into throwing the ball. Gromos did, and it was a completion. White has been interceptionless today. He has nine to lead the nation on the season. First and ten from the 49-yard line, Vanderbilt. Gromos to Weatherspoon. Not much this time. Struggles for a yard or two. Gromos now 12 of 27 for 127 yards. One interception, no touchdowns. Gromos, 6'5", 185 pounds from Crest Hill, Illinois. Very bright young man. Tim, you said at the beginning of the game that you thought he had made as much progress as any pure freshman quarterback you've ever seen. I really think, and I think that's one of the reasons right there, George McIntyre. Mac's a great teacher, and he's got a couple of other people. Whit Taylor was uh, there on the staff with, uh, with George, and uh, Donnie Sherman has been working with the quarterback, so the combination of things. But you also have to be a mature young individual to handle the kind of pressure that a quarterback gets in the SEC. Al Rogers trying to get past Andre Kramer at about the 30. Pass goes incomplete. There they are. The bumper stickers have broken out already on the sideline. Tim McGee holding it. 1985 SEC champions. They are 7 minutes 54 seconds away from that becoming an actual fact. But with the score at 30 to nothing, I'd say it's close enough to distribute the bumper stickers and the sugar cubes and the airline reservations and the hotel reservations and the restaurant reservations in New Orleans. Oh, Tennessee loves to go bowling, and this is the first major bowl in many a moon. Third down 10 from the 49. Now, Gromos under pressure. Throwing on the run, incomplete. At the 45-yard line, trying to find Jim Pop coming across the side. Jim Pop does not have a catch today. Good pressure there by Richard Brown, 98. The Sugar Bowl. It'll be a real good matchup. I think uh, four or five weeks ago, folks were beginning to wonder as they looked down the rest of the season and saw that Tennessee would probably be favored, even Tony Robinson-less, against their last three opponents. Were saying that, well, this isn't our best representative. I'm not so sure that that's true right now. I, I think this offense has really come to life. I mean, we've seen them score 
scored 42 points in the last uh, seven quarters and not 42 excuse me 70. 72 points yeah. and shut out their opposition you know I think they're they're a very good representative of the SEC and they match up very well with Miami because they're so good on pass defense and you know for the folks who say that look they beat Kentucky Vanderbilt and Ole Miss second division clubs remember Tennessee beat Alabama and Auburn earlier in the year we'll be right back TBS Sports bringing you the conclusion of our regular season SEC game of the week here at noontime Eastern time every week hope you've enjoyed our season this year some great football action we followed Tennessee right here to the Sugar Bowl they'll hold on to the 30 point lead for seven minutes 38 seconds and I just have a feeling they're going to here's Dickey to Jeff Powell he's hit back at the two yard line excellent penetration and tackle by number seven Jeff Holt Tennessee's got themselves backed up here in a pretty deep hole Daryl Dickey what a year he's had 298 yards today passing the football as you can see Dickey is second in the SEC in passing efficiency he could very well pass Mike Shula in passing efficiency today and that's a complicated arrangement of how many passes you throw in completions and yardage and touchdowns versus interceptions etc so Dickey's got a shot up there to catch Shula of Alabama Shula will be playing later this afternoon of course in Birmingham against Auburn coming out of the end zone is Jeff Powell what acceleration out to the 12 yard line He's only back to the original line of scrimmage and a little bit further, however, and it'll bring up third down and about eight or nine yards for Tennessee with 6.43 to go in the football game. Receiving leaders, Everett Crawford of Vanderbilt is hurt. Boo Mitchell, the Vandy pure freshman, true freshman, second. Gary James down at LSU is third. Tim McGee, though, in my opinion, the best receiver in the league. Alabama people would probably argue for Al Bell, but my vote goes to Tim McGee because of the great big plays he's made this year. Third down nine from the 13. Out to the 18 goes Jeff Powell and down he goes. Best rusher in the SEC. Bo Jackson, Auburn, 1,644 yards. By the way, he needs 625 yards today to pass Lorenzo White. If Bo gets 625 against Alabama, he'll certainly get my ballot for Heisman. And Neil Anderson went over 1,000 today, has somewhere around 80 yards last we heard in that Florida-Florida State game, and Dalton Hilliard, also down at LSU. A lot of talented men just on that screen. We've seen a lot of good football this year. We'll be seeing their names continually on the NFL rosters. Mike McIntyre at the 40. Bear catches it there. And with 5.26 to go, Vanderbilt will try to avoid the shutout. And there's a great sight. Tony Robinson and the man who filled in for him and a little bit of sugar prior to the big bowl. This is Turner Network Television. Still Tim Foley with you at Neyland Stadium. Knoxville, Tennessee. The crowd's going crazy because the PA announcer is just announcing the procedure for the awarding of the SEC championship trophy for the Sugar Bowl invitation and it's 526 away and now Tim Richardson is in at quarterback for Vanderbilt first and 10 from the 39 Richardson under pressure and it's caught by an offensive lineman with a penalty marker down it was tipped by a defender first however Tim Richardson also a freshman I believe it was hit by Charles Kimbrough first Tim Foley by the way as you look at it again is on his way down field side where we'll carry the championship celebration and by Tennessee see that shouldn't be a penalty marker because once it's touched that's a loose ball and Will Walford the All-American candidate at tackle just caught the ball and it is ruled as a reception and will be spotted as that that there there was no flag on the play. Richardson. Incomplete pass. He was hit by 77 Richard Cooper. This crowd's already started partying here at Neyland Stadium. Chris White, number seven, nation's leader in interceptions. He was a former quarterback, moved to defensive back when he saw he wasn't going to beat Tony Robinson and some of these others out at the talented position for Tennessee. Started the season as a backup, earned his way in due to injuries, and now. He's only three short of the record of J.W. Sherrill, who holds the record at 12 for interceptions. That's J.W. no relation 
to Jackie. Jackie Sherrill, of course, the Texas A&M coach, went to Alabama, in case you're wondering. Third down, 12 from the 38-yard line, Vanderbilt. Richardson. This is his man, number 12, Carl Parker. Richardson, the 6'1", 185-pound freshman from Sparta, Tennessee. He's more of a scrambler-type quarterback, and he and Gromos battled for that backup role behind Ratcher after the injury to Ratcher. Gromos won it because he's much more of a, of a better passer in terms of pure passing ability, and Richardson's only played sparingly this year. So Tennessee held Vanderbilt again, and now five minutes and seven seconds away from an SEC title, the first since 1969 when Doug D Dickey was coaching. There's Andre Kramer. He was injured last week in the Tennessee game against Kentucky. Bear catches it at the 22. And Tennessee will run off a lot of clock here. You can believe they'll just be handing that ball off to their backs, Powell and Davis and Miller and Howard, etc. We'll be back in just a moment. Tennessee leading 30 to nothing. And Tennessee has a new quarterback, number 19, Jeff Francis, in the game. The freshman from Mount Prospect, Illinois, 6'3", 200 pounds. He's played sparingly this year. He gives it off to Pete Panuska. Just runs the ball up to the middle, out to about the 27-yard line. Tennessee leading 30 to nothing. Francis may not even throw a single pass. He's 14 out of 20 on the year. One interception, one touchdown. He was a very talented Illinois quarterback in Mount Prospect. That's up in the Chicago area. And Walt Harris, the offensive coordinator here at Tennessee, found him as Walt Harris used to coach college football at Illinois before coming to Tennessee. Probably the Tennessee quarterback of 1986. Second down five to the 27. Tennessee's got a big hole to fill there with Robinson going, Dickey going. Short of the first down is Pete Panuska, number 36. He was hit by Chris Gaines, who has 13 tackles for Vanderbilt today. You see Chris very slow to get off the turf. He's playing with that broken left wrist, and he has really had a workout out of the middle linebacking position, and this Vanderbilt defense has been on the field all day long. 3.58 remaining in the game. Tennessee 30, Vanderbilt nothing. This will be third down two. Daryl Dickey has just done a wonderful job. Look at that. 106 consecutive passes without an interception. In the meantime, he's also thrown for nine touchdowns. So he's been putting it up. It's not been a safety valve job. First down, Tennessee. Out to the 38-yard line goes Pete Panuska. He was tripped up by Willis Perry, the right cornerback. And the celebration has already begun here in Knoxville. Tennessee football, what a tradition it's been. They were down all during the 70s, have come back some, not certainly to where they've wanted to be during the late 70s and early 80s. But now, Johnny Majors, who was hired in 1977 after winning the national championship at Pittsburgh in 76, and he's directed this team and recruited these players and put together an SEC champion here in 1985. First and ten from the 37. Francis bobbles the snap. Maintain possession of the ball, though. And Tim Foley has rejoined us on the sideline now, where Tim will be finishing the rest of the game, and then he will uh, also be uh, uh, talking to Tennessee players and covering the celebration for the SEC title. We'll go down to Tim in a little while. It will now be second down, 11, Tennessee. At the 36-yard line, two minutes, 44 seconds remaining in this football game. Tennessee leading 30 to nothing. Robert Nealon started it all here back in 1920. He lost only two games under General Nealon in his first seven seasons at Tennessee. Then came Bowden Wyatt. And not much there, there. And uh, Tennessee just running the clock out. It's down to 222. Pete Panuska hit by Steve Wade. And Tim Foley is on the sideline. And Tim, uh, you ready for the celebration down there? They may have already they're, started it. <laughs> they're pouring sugar in each other's mouths, Bob. <laughs> they're they're excited about it. We're going to have a lot of fat fans if they keep doing that. <laughs> should go to a lower calorie bowl. They'll be better off. You weren't leaning up like that? A minute 55 left in the ball game. Third down 13, Tennessee. Just running the clock out here. And that's Panuska getting it again. You can see this celebration has started. Knoxville is going to be wild today, folks. They've been waiting for this 
for years and years and years. In 1975 through 1978, Tennessee had no bowl bids. They've had no major bowl bids, well, since 1969, really, the last time that Tennessee won the SEC title. In the 60s, under Doug Dickey, the new athletic director, Tennessee won five bowls and two championships. We're undefeated back in 56 under Bowden Wyatt. But since then, it's been a long, dry spell in Tennessee. These folks are ready to drink from the cup of victory. Mike McIntyre out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. So with a minute left, Vanderbilt has a little bit of time to try to put something up. 35-yard punt, four-yard return. Tim, has it started already down there, the celebration? Just a lot, of, a lot of hugging going on, Bob. A lot of number ones pointed up in the air. They're ready to go. You know, they're ready for this game to be over and ready for their SEC championship trophy. 97,000 plus here today. A new stadium attendance record at Neyland Stadium. And they came to see the winning of the SEC title. Tennessee has outscored Kentucky and now Vanderbilt 72 to nothing in the last eight quarters of football. You cannot argue with that excellence. Richardson going long. Andre Kramer. Parker going up for the ball. It falls incomplete. Clay Parker. Kramer covering on the play. Only eight seconds running off the clock. So the SEC championship trophy will be delivered to these volunteers. And the Sugar Bowl invitation will be extended to the University of Tennessee. And they'll play Miami on New Year's Day in New Orleans. Most folks wondered if Tennessee could win all three of their final SEC games. They had three conference games to finish the season with Ole Miss, Kentucky, and Vanderbilt. Second division clubs, admittedly, but it had been since 78 since Tennessee had beaten all three of those clubs in a single year. Now they've done it this year. That's incomplete, intended for Fitz. And the clock down to 46. So Vanderbilt really simply prolonging the agony throwing the ball here, trailing 30 to nothing. Bob, I've got David Keith down here with me. Yeah, Tim, down to you with David Keith, the, of course, the actor. And I'm going to put the headset on him. All righty? Okay. Hello. I'll wait. Bob Neal. How hey, you doing? Keith, Bob Neal in the booth. Uh, we've been watching you the last couple of games, and you I know you're a, a native of this area. You follow the volunteers all the time, don't you? Yes, sir. Anytime I can. I had to watch them by tape in Europe. I saw it every Wednesday. My parents sent me the tape of the game. I made them all last year, though, but this is the best. Well, you went, did you go to high school here in Knoxville? Yes, Where? young young high school. And while I was in junior high school, I was an equipment manager over here. So I've been around the team since about 67. Well, it's great to have you here. I, I'm sure these players uh, appreciate a celebrity as well known as you coming here to give them some support. How's it feel down there on the side? Oh, right it is a party. It's a party. It's great. <laughs> Might we expect you in New Orleans? Oh, are you kidding? I made my reservation three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> David Keith, thank you for joining us. Okay. We'll look for you in New Orleans as the Tennessee Volunteers. Yes, sir. Are 19 seconds away from their first SEC title since 1969. You see the players down there on the sideline just waiting. Waiting for the next play to happen, and they'll just fall on the ball and let the clock run out. Johnny Majors in the middle of the crowd down there. Put Tennessee's head football coach Johnny Majors has taken this volunteer team and along with his staff as he readily admits and matter of fact uh, urges you to say along with his staff and his players regrouped after the loss of their great leader and quarterback Tony Robinson 19 seconds left Jeff Francis just falls on the ball that'll be the last play of this ball game clock down to 12 you'll hear him count it down let's just watch and listen said so well in a newspaper column on the front page of the Knoxville Journal today 
This man said, who wrote the column, said, what a lot of folks who aren't from around here don't understand, that this is the rallying point for the Tennessee, Eastern Tennessee region. The university and this football team is what keeps people happy in tough times. And it's the thing that makes people hold their head high and that this game today is bigger than just a football game. It is of tremendous importance to the people of East Tennessee. And there's a young man from Tallahassee, Florida, Tony Robinson, who gets a great deal of the credit for getting Tennessee here. The team was 3-1-1 when he went down with an knee injury against Alabama. And then Johnny Majors rallied the volunteers around him and placed Daryl Dickey, the 24-year-old, fifth-year senior quarterback in to try to keep this team together. Dickey did a magnificent job. Nine touchdown passes, only one interception. The offensive line was unbelievable. The defense was spectacular. And Tennessee, a true and deserving champion of the Southeastern Conference. The Sugar Bowl invitation has just been extended to Tennessee head coach Johnny Majors. You see on the right side of your screen, Johnny Majors talking to Sugar Bowl officials who are here waiting to extend the invitation if Tennessee was able to beat Vanderbilt today. Standing just to the right of Johnny Majors is his wife, Mary Lynn. Johnny Majors, who won the national championship at Pittsburgh in 76, came back to his alma mater in 77 and has struggled a little bit here. He went four and seven that first year, then five and five, won seven in 79, eight games in 81, nine games in 83. But this is the year, the SEC championship, the first since 1969, and the Sugar Bowl invitation has been presented right out in the center of the field, Shields Watkins Field here at Neyland Stadium. What a moment it is for these folks here in East Tennessee. You just have to be happy for them. The goalposts have come down, and the students have got the goalposts from both ends, and they're being carted off the field to various celebrations here in Knoxville this afternoon. And Tim Foley is down in the University of Tennessee locker room with a man who really deserves a great deal of the credit for this Tennessee championship this year, Tony Robinson. Tim Foley. Bob, I'm down here with the, the Tennessee's great quarterback, Tony Robinson, who was injured against Alabama. Really, it carried the football team through the first half of the season. And, and Tony, I know it's a little bit bittersweet for you, but how do you feel about this team? Well, uh, from the beginning of the season, I, feel, I felt real great uh, about this team. Uh, people can remember, I told a long time ago that my senior year, we're going to the Sugar Bowl, and, you know, just fortunate I'm not playing, but uh, Daryl's doing a real good job for me, and like I said, we're going to the Sugar Bowl. That's true. Now I know I know it's got to be it has to be a little tough for you to you know, to be a part of something for so long and then the last couple of games not being able to play. Can you describe to the people how that feels? Well, you know, uh, once I got injured, uh, you know, I felt kind of bad about it, but I knew it's it the risk you take playing football, and uh, I knew the guys would carry on after I got hurt, and I had a lot of confidence in them, and I'm real happy for them, and I'm just ready to go to New Orleans. How, how much have you been involved in the, in the preparation? Have you talked to Doug Dickey, Daryl Dickey, excuse me, at all, or have you worked with him on uh, specific receivers, or has he picked up most of that by himself? Well, Daryl was my backup, and he uh, learned a lot of things from me, and I learned some things from him, and... Uh, you know, I didn't talk to him that much, but I knew Daryl could get the job done once he got in. He got a lot of repetitions at the job, and so far he's done a real good job. And hopefully he can carry it on to a victory in the Sugar Bowl. How's your knee coming? It's doing real well. Uh, right now I can bend it a lot more, and hopefully by Thursday I have a lot, a little bit more bend in it. Fantastic. Well, Bob, we're down here. The players are starting to filter into the locker room now, and of course you can sense the excitement. You saw a lot of the enthusiasm out there in the field. They're coming in here now all sweaty and dirtied up, a little bloody, but ready to go to uh, New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. And out here on the field, they're still carrying the goal post around, and I know we're going to be talking to uh, some of the players and to head coach Johnny Majors, hopefully, there in the Tennessee locker room celebration. Tennessee winning the Southeastern Conference Championship. They're ranked ninth by UPI coming into today's game before this season. Sporting News picked Tennessee fifth in the conference. Sports Illustrated fourth in the conference. And most believe Tennessee would have nothing but the Tony Robinson show. Tennessee showed they had Robinson, yes, but they had a whole lot more true grit, particularly with the defense. Holding the opposition to no points at all in the last eight quarters of the season, and Tennessee's offense scoring 72. This is a true champion of the Southeastern Conference. And Tim Foley down in the locker room. Now let's go back to you. 
We'll get a, the other half of this quarterback tandem that uh, led Tennessee to the SEC championship, Daryl Dickey. And Daryl, you come in and just done a wonderful job. Your performance today might vault you into first first place in terms of passing efficiency in the SEC. You've done a great job. Well, thank you very much. It's been a great experience for me. And I tell you, this guy right here, Tony Robinson, has helped me out tremendously. And uh, if it wouldn't have been for him, we wouldn't be in the situation that we are today. And uh, I think our football team has done a tremendous job all year, especially bouncing back after Tony got hurt. And uh, it's just a great feeling. We're going to love it, and we're going to be in, in New Orleans to play Miami and be ready to play them. Let me ask you, did you did they change anything after Tony went down, or is it pretty much the base, same system, same offense? Well, I think it took us a week or so to really get a feel of what we are going to do. And after the Georgia Tech game, we did have a few problems, and we decided, hey, we're going to beat Tennessee's offense. We're going to do the things that we did to get us to where we were when Tony got hurt, and we're going to just do what we do best, and that's beat Tennessee. We did that the last five, six ball games, and it's, it's, it's worked tremendously for us. Yes, it seemed as though the defense carried you early on through the change, through the second half of the Alabama game, and then in Georgia Tech. But the offense has really, really come out here. You know, it's 72 to nothing exactly. in the last two games. Exactly. You can't say enough for our defense. They've been playing tremendous football and helping the offense so much, giving us the ball in good field position. And it's just been an outstanding experience working with this football team. Come here, Tim. Hey, <laughs> Timmy McGee. Another, another great performer, another big part of this Tennessee offense. Just another great job, Timmy. It, it's great. It's great when you play good on the championship team. When you know you're a part of it and you're a big part of it, it's a feeling that's just awesome. Another couple of touchdowns for you today, a couple of great receptions. You seem to always come up with a big play for this volunteer offense. Well, I think if any good receiver want to be the big play man in the offense, and fortunately I'm the big play man in this offense, and when you're on the number one team in the SEC, once in the Super Bowl, it helps a whole lot. Well, congratulations, my friend. You've had a great career here in Tennessee. Thanks, Tim. Bobby? Yeah, Johnny it's Majors has joined you there, Tim. Did the coach get away? We saw Johnny Majors in the picture. Okay, the good, time. yeah. And let's see if we can say a few words. To Here Johnny he comes Majors. now, John Majors. Here's head coach Johnny Majors. <laughs> hey, Johnny, you put him away early today, huh? Yeah, yes, we did. This football team makes as few mistakes as any football team I've ever been around, Jim. And uh, the second half, we were a little sporadic, but we had a good lead, and I think we did what we had to do, and I wouldn't want to play another play again. Really a courageous team. You know, you've talked about that in the past, how this team has responded to adversity and has really overcome every, every obstacle that's been placed in their way. Well, it's the most unique football team I've ever been around, and the stingiest as far as making mistakes and, and as, uh, as uh, opportunist of football teams I've ever been around. We've had that. As we talk about football, it's a great example of you're no better than your weakest link. We lost a big link in our chain. We got some rust on it occasionally, but everybody that came through there did their job. You take Daryl Dickey, fifth year senior, uh, Chris White, a fantastic fifth year senior, hadn't played very much. Jeff Powell, a fourth year senior, his first year. And many, many instances like that where somebody just came through and just pleasantly pleased us. And the defense, once again, they come through with a shutout. 72 to nothing over the last two games. That's unbelievable. Well, Ken Donahue deserves a lot of credit, but so do the, and so do his other coaches, Ron Shook and, and Dick Bumpus and Mel Foles. That doggone Donahue, I tried to get him here three years ago, but they did a great job. They came from really nowhere in spring practice, but they made some things happen early. Then they got stingier and got better, and our offense was terrific until we lost Robinson. We split it for a week. All of a sudden, they started coming great. That's a tribute to our team, the offensive coaches, the defensive coaches, the Darrell Dickey, people like that. Now, you've experienced the SEC championship as a player. Is it different as a coach? No, well, it's always great. At the time, there was nothing like the Southeastern Conference Championship in 56. That's the last team that won the championship and went to Sugar Bowl too. This is the next one. It's special, and I've been fortunate to be around a lot of good coaches and a lot of good players. And I count my blessings. And I'm really looking forward, and it's a great thrill to win this again, but I wouldn't take anything for those youngsters because they'll always be a part of a championship team. 
It may not buy my house or a car or be defended, but they can never take it away from me. And that's what coaching is all about, right? The long hours that you put in, all the trying experiences and, and listening to the criticism of people that really don't know what they're talking about, all for all for this, all for that championship ring. Well, it's kind of corny, I guess, but it's not. It's not the critics' account, and it's the people in the arena, so to speak. And the one thing you learn the more you live, you learn not to fight windmills. You can't control certain things. There's no way you can make everybody happy all the time. Try to please the people that count. The coaches, the players, and have a one line of the communication to work for. And I tell you what, you've created some tremendous memories for these people here. A day they'll never forget, a season they'll never forget. Bob? Congratulations to head coach Johnny Majors and the Tennessee Vols winning the SEC championship today with their 30 to nothing defeat over the Vanderbilt Commodores as you look inside the University of Tennessee locker room facilities how sweet it is as Tennessee heads to the Sugar Bowl to play the University of Miami the final score today Tennessee 30 Vanderbilt nothing